Harker is currently in the, I think it's the Montcalm County Jail. He has to be present by a Zoom. Uh, I have chosen, after reading his rambling motion here, to uh, not request oral argument from anyone, including Ms. Buckner, although she is here and on. Um, Mr. Buckner, in effect, has asked for DNA paternity testing. Um, this case was initially filed back in uh, 2019. Allegations were made in which Mr. Buckner admitted uh, in his answer that uh, the parties had uh, an affidavit of parentage. He has never questioned the parentage of these children throughout his time. He's fought many times to get time with the children. He even says in this motion that he intends to file to get 50-50 um, from some agreement that was made some time ago that she decided not to um, follow through on. His motion is not filed in a timely manner to revoke an affidavit of parentage must be filed within three years of the children uh, the, of the AOP and uh, or one year uh, when the affidavit of parentage was signed. It's alleged that it was signed a long time ago in 2019 or before that. So he's not followed anything. Um, and as such, uh, I believe his motion is basically frivolous at this point, and I'm going to deny deny it. Um, I will state for the record that Mr. Hartker does have a personal protection order against him by Ms. Buckner that goes through uh, October of this, of 2024. And there is also a, an ex parte order that was signed by Judge Gardner that he uh, must file a motion to reinstate any parenting time and must submit medical health professional statement that he po poses no risk of harm to the kids. I'm just putting that on the record, but I'm not having him here. And because I don't believe he comes anywhere near uh, obtaining the relief that he has sought. So I'm denying his motion in its entirety. Um, ma'am, uh, I'm not going to have you argue anything. Do you understand what I said then? Yes, thank you so much, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Good luck to you, ma'am. Take care. My okay. client is have here, but we wanted to thank confirm you, that before she hopped onto the video, there is a um, no contact order in place um, as part of her probation. And That's so we fine. wanted to ensure that that That's was fine. She's uh, in your office, he's yes. in his office. Every, there's no contact, and it's appropriate at this time. Uh, All it's right. a matter of Richter versus. Wilkinson, this is a motion filed for a temporary order, um, kind of going through some of the matter. There was a temporary, um, or excuse me, there was a default order that was entered by me, uh, giving certain uh, custody and, and stuff like that. Um, that order was ultimately set aside by Judge Hillary. I'm assuming that everything was done to set that aside. I mean, there, there's requirements of paying counsel and stuff like that. Is that is that a fair statement? Yes, Your Honor. That's all part of the order to set aside the default. All right. And, and you have fulfilled all those requirements, right? We are in the process of doing that. All right. Um, well, all right. I understand that if that uh, is actually set aside because there are requirements to do it. I think Mr uh Volmering is entitled to some attorney's fees and stuff like that that is correct honor and i did send those to opposing counsel last either this week or last week and so um i don't know how to say it but i guess it's not tech you have an order that it will be set aside upon completion of of that i don't no the order says that it's currently set aside and that uh they would give us a bill of the fees and we had the opportunity to object but it is currently set aside um right. based on the order that judge hillary signed this week all right. I, if, he, if he signed it this week, I don't have it yet, but that's fine. All right. Uh, that temporary order having, or the that uh, default order having been set aside, there is really no order uh, out there at this time regarding parenting time or whatnot. And um, counsel for defendant has filed requesting parenting time. Uh, I've I've seen that you are counsel. Uh, you've asked for <laughs> asked for going back to what they were doing prior to the order being in uh, there, which was kind of, uh, as I recall, Thursday through Sunday night for dad and the other times for mom. Um, counsel for uh, uh, Mr. Richter are saying that it was set through the default order and they wish to maintain that order. We do have a hearing sometime in April to go through all of this. Anything you wanna briefly say, uh, Ms. McCallum? 
Uh, yes, Your Honor. So um, at the hearing to enter the default order, he actually, um, the plaintiff actually represented to the court that the parties- I read it all. I understand. I read okay. the transcript and um, I read everything you put in. And, and, and there's really no reason that's been given for why my client would be unfit to continue that parenting time. Um, there's been no issues with the parenting time. In fact, it has been plaintiff who's been playing games with holding parenting time. What's the deal here with uh, some kind of, she has a personal protection order against her or something like that? Yes. So there was a personal protection order filed in this court um, that was denied by Judge Hillary. And a day yeah. later, they filed for a personal Barry protection County. order in Barry County, which was just clearly a blatant um, uh, attempt to circumvent uh, jurisdiction and venue and to forum shop. Um, and so we do have an objection pending on that. We're also right. trying to resolve the issue, um, but it has not been resolved. All right. Yet. So the bottom line is she does in, in any parenting time I get, I got to figure out how they can make an exchange with that uh, order there. They have been doing parenting time exchanges through my client's parents um, and they, her parents are willing to continue to facilitate Part those. These parties live apart. Anybody? I mean, where is that, Your Honor? Where do, the, how far do these parties live apart? I mean, it sounds like uh, does does your client, uh, Mr. Volmering, live in Barry County or something? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so things. Middleville. Middleville, excuse me. Middleville. All right. And uh, Miss. Uh, Wilkinson lives where? I mean, she lives in Grand Rapids. All right. So it's a little bit of a trip to make an exchange. All right. I understand what you're saying, Mr. Volmering. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, for the parenting time, the parties have been working off the schedule from the default order that was now set aside. It seems to be working. It doesn't make much sense, nor does it seem to be in the best interest of Maxine, the minor child in this case, to disrupt that schedule once again um, for these parties to have this on a temporary basis in order to just go to an evidentiary hearing to potentially have a change for uh, again um, for consistency's sake i don't think that it's appropriate to modify the order at this time um, at the last hearing it was suggested or at least implied that you know there's only a couple months it's not that long of a wait time to be under this current parenting time schedule i agree with that um, there was this issue with the ppo um, we are working to get that uh, dismissed in place of a no contact order, a civil no contact order, allowing the parties to facilitate child exchanges. Um, I think that is going to be in the best interest of the child in this case. Again, just for consistency's sake, um, defendant is, or excuse me, the opposing party is asking for um, some additional parenting time. We haven't really had much of an opportunity to conduct any discovery. My client is telling me that at the birth of this child, the child uh, was discovered to have THC in her system. So the opposing party must have been smoking or consuming marijuana during that time. So there are concerns similar to that, that is also contributing to this. We just haven't had a time to go through that discovery process and maintaining the present um, schedule would allow that consistency, protect all the parties involved and allow for a proper discovery process moving forward. All right. Well, the bottom line is that order that uh, I entered as a default is just no longer applicable and I'm not going to follow anything, but that we're going back to go. And your client did start out and he did tell me in the transcript that they were getting along enough to do basically 50 50. And, um, and I, I really, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going back to go, not, uh, not using something here that, um, and I don't know what the judge set it aside for. I have no idea, but he set it aside. And so we're, uh, I deal with that. Um, and I think that I'll go back to uh, the prior relationship that the parties had, as far as the child goes, I will make a minor change and that, um, not from Thursdays to Sundays. Well, I am. I'm going to insure more of 50-50 because your client, Mr. Volmering, was not getting 50-50. I'm going to allow him to have parenting time from like this week, um, Thursday through Sunday, Thursday at 6 p.m. to Sunday at 6 p.m. Next week, he will have it from Wednesday to Sunday. That will enable him to have four nights, three nights, and, and the parties will continue to do that. Can I leave it to the parties to figure out how to do the exchange or do I need to rule on that somehow? I mean, uh, it sounds like they're going to soon have, and, and it would be great. I, I do a lot of PPO stuff too. And it's great when parties are involved in this, they need to have some um, civil restraining order, especially with this group here. Um, and so I'm, I'm just trying to figure out, I don't want to make an order based on a PPO that's going to be Your Honor, got rid of two weeks. 
The problem is that um, as part of my client's probation, she's waiting for the order back to confirm that there is uh, not still a, no contact in the criminal case, which um, whether the PPO is set aside or not, she may still not be able to have contact. What's, uh, what's the criminal case you're referring to? I don't know anything about that. Um, there was a domestic dispute incident um, and uh, my client, I believe, pled no contest and is going to be on probation and it will be erased from her record. Um, and as part of that, um, we're, we're uncertain still where the no contact. Pled no, no contest. So that's the same as pleading guilty. I mean, she it's just a different way of saying it. So she is guilty of a domestic violence against against the father of the child. Is that what that's? That's correct. That is correct. Um, and I would think as a part of probation, having done 35 years of criminal work, that they would have a no contact against the father, um, me, mother against the father. So um, I'm going to operate with the assumption that we got to have some other third party involved in it. Can you and Mr. Bomering figure that out or do you want me to figure out? Because she's not going to, I don't want her having contact with somebody if she's been convicted of domestic violence. Um, I, I Our proposal would be that my client's parents um, continue to facilitate the exchanges and they equally share in the uh, travel burden. So the parent, uh, whoever is um, beginning or ending their parenting time will be the one to do the transportation oh. and it would be my client's parents when it's her time. So where do your parents, where do the parents reside? Hastings. Hastings. Oh, so they're actually down that County. way. Down that way for uh, Mr. Richter. Is that, is that a, so you would get the child there and he would pick up from Hastings and then um, he would drop uh, off the child at, at Hastings. Uh, so the proposal would be that uh, he would pick up the child from Hastings and then my client's parents would pick up the child um, when it's her parenting time from his residence. Is that, is that a problem, Mr. Volmering? Because, I, again, I can't imagine that she won't have some restrictions on her from having any contact with your client. And for the time being, as long as those parents are uh, willing, that's probably the best thing. I don't assume that they assaulted Mr. Richter. Yes, Your Honor, that, that seems fine. All right. So he will pick up when it's his time from the parents and the parents will pick up from him when when they're getting their time. All right. Now, yeah, right. both parties have also talked about mediation, I think, or whatever. Or maybe that's just my own deal. What about um, I think I'm going to order mediation in this case um, because we don't have a hearing until April. And there's no reason that this shouldn't go to mediation. Um, I guess what I will say also is that I'm going to order mediation and parties have seven days to agree upon a mediator and set that up promptly um, and see what can be done. Now, the only problem with mediation is the parties do have to probably be in the same room or something or in the same area together. And, and the only reason mediation would not take place is if it's prohibited um, through her She's on probation. If the probation officer says no for mediation uh, that you can't, then I will relieve you of that requirement. Thank you, Your Honor. I would assume we could do it via Zoom and not have any contact if necessary. And that's, but if that's if that can't be done, then I want then then that part of the order will be null and void. Mr. Volmering, any thoughts on that? Does your client object to mediation? No, Your Honor. Uh, can I leave it up to the two? attorneys to um, pick a mediator within a week? Yes, right. you can. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Good luck. Thank you very much. Um, that's the order of the court now. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor, real quick. Yes. Um, when is uh, my client's parenting time scheduled to begin? This I, I understand we have Thursday through Sunday, but today is Friday. So is he going to exchange back on Sunday then? Uh, he has the child now, doesn't he? I believe so, yes. Yeah, so he'll have till Sunday and then... And then the next week he'll start on this coming Wednesday. He'll start on this coming Wednesday. Perfect. Thank and you. then the next week he will have Thursday and so on. Okay. Thank you. Right. Good luck, everybody. Thank you. We're Thank adjourned. you. 16. No, I got it 16. I had it memorized earlier, but I lost track. <laughs> All right, everybody out there in YouTube land, Missy. Cheryl, whoever's all out there, good morning to you. Both parties are present.
as well as uh, on Mr. Day. Smith's attorney, Mr. Tobier, and this is a request from the um, mother, uh, the defendant, uh, says it's stated as custody. However, I have to agree that it sounds more like a change of domicile than custody. Um, as you've requested, ma'am, to be able to move outside the 100-mile limit, about 160 miles away. Uh, there was a judgment of divorce that was entered that uh, provided for joint legal custody and even states in paragraph 7 deals with change of domicile. You're kind of asking for week on, week off, but um, but literally you want to change the child's residence to over on the east side of the state, which is uh, you got to request a change of domicile. Um and uh, I, I mean, I know that I'm not the statements that I hear. You want to change domicile, but you want to make year week on week off. But you're going to spend two days then your week here and then spend the other five days over on the east side of the state. Is that is that what you're asking for? So I am going to be coming into the office every Monday. I have to work Monday and Tuesday. So I would come back on Sunday and I my plan is to stay at my mom's house with Grace, who they have a very great relationship. Well, and then, that. and then the the rest of the week, I would be on the east side of the state from Tuesday through Sunday. We would be coming back every Sunday. But then the next week, Mister Smith would have your child for a week. For a whole week, correct. Um, well, you are asking for a change of domicile, and and with joint legal, um, I'd have to determine if it, if it's in the best interest of the child and and what not for that. We'd have to have an evidentiary hearing for that. Um, for that change of domicile, unless the uh, unless Mr. Smith agrees to it, um, no. he, uh, he can always agree to it. But Mr. Tobiran has filed an answer in which he clearly doesn't agree. So uh, we'll have to have an evidentiary hearing for that. Mr. Tobiran, anything on that issue you wish to respond to? Well, Ms. Smith and I have not discussed this. I would certainly think we should talk before we have an evidentiary hearing. This child, as I I mean, it's 16, 16 plus years old. It just seems outrageous that we're going to potentially uproot her at that age and have her live in three different homes. Um, and as I put in my response, she's been primarily living with my client since August anyways. Um, you know, <laughs> well, my, I, I have to have an evidentiary hearing if there's a request for change of domicile with legal uh, with joint legal custody. So, and, and that's what the request is, is to move her uh, outside the 100 mile limit and basically have have a change of domicile in, is with mom. So I'll, you you will not get a hearing in the next week or two. So you got plenty of time for the parties to discuss the matter um, and see what happens. What grade is this child in? She's, she's in, a, in 11th grade. I, I put together a little thing. I don't know if I'm allowed to, to read it off to you. What to, regarding what? Uh, this whole situation. What a, what are you trying? I mean, you filed a motion and, and you're asking for a change of domicile. Is there anything in there? I, I can't make a ruling on change of domicile today, no matter what you tell me. I well, I I I don't really feel like it's a change of domicile because she's going to be spending the majority of the time in Grand Rapids. So I didn't feel that that was the appropriate way to go. And when I went to the clerk's office on the fifth floor, I think it was, this is, and I told them the situation, this is the, this is the paperwork that they told me that I needed to fill out. Right, well, even assuming, even assuming it's not, you're saying it's a change of custody. Okay. A change of custody. I'd have an evidentiary hearing about that also. And I, I would also note that she's actually requesting by court order that my client have more parenting time. So it's, I understand. It's I, clearly, I, I mean, but I think this, my huge hang up is Rick states that Grace has spent the majority of her time since August 1st with him. And that's, that's not true. I have dates of the times that she has gone with him. She, there was a strained relationship between, between August or between April 4th and November 4th. Grace had only eight overnights with her dad when she should have had 60. In the last three but, months, things have imp have improved with the relationship, and she has had 37 overnights, seven more than the court allowed. And I can't change custody or domicile, whatever we set it as, uh, on a Friday morning. I can only set an evidentiary hearing because they're objecting to this change. 
And it, whether you call it custody or domicile, it, it really, from a standpoint of what I can do on a Friday morning, I'm, I cannot agree to say go 50-50, uh, only uh, the child live with you for like two or for a week, two days here, five days in Detroit and that kind of stuff. You can negotiate anything you want. In fact, I'm going to, uh, I think we should refer this to mediation because the parties need to sit down and talk. Quite frankly, the child's 16 um, and in 11th grade, um, a lot of consideration is going to be given to the child. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't do that here and nor will I do it here. Okay. So we'll just set that for an evidentiary hearing um, regarding custody slash change of domicile you'll get a, you'll get some time but it's not going to be for it's not going to be for a month two months I, i'd imagine it'll be in april or something before you're going to get time we don't have a lot of time available so we'll set an evidentiary hearing regarding that can the parties agree on going to mediation for all this i yeah, yeah. i i'll do whatever it takes i am i'm Sure. I have to make a financial decision. I'm drowning in every month that goes by. Well, I mean, you can still, I don't know how to say it. Uh, you don't need an order if you want to leave the, the child here with him and and you go over there for some time or something. I don't know what, yeah, you talk to Mr. Tobiran about it. Maybe you guys can work something out. Um, so we'll set up an evidentiary hearing on that. You've also asked for a child support review, ma'am, stating that the, um, I believe the last uniform child support order was in uh, August 31st of 2022. Correct. You say that the father's making more money, that he's changed jobs. Mr. Tobiran, what do you know about that or or your client, Mr. Smith's, whatever? Uh, my client, uh, at a very basic level, denies that claim. Uh, does he have a, a different job since August 31st of 2022? Mr. Smith, are you still working at the same job? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I do have a different job since uh, since that day, yes. And the reason you changed jobs? Uh, actually, my previous job was considered a part-time job, and this is considered a full-time job. And it would seem like you're probably making more. Uh, very little more. Well. And the claim of me not... Uh, Turning in the correct uh, wages. That doesn't matter to me. I'm, uh, that okay. doesn't matter okay. me at this point. I'm just saying that it, it's apparent that uh, you have changed jobs. We'll refer that matter to the friend of the court for a um, child support review. Okay. All right. Next request was for medical bills that uh, Ms. Smith has requested. Um, and basically, uh Ma'am, there's, there's a whole process that's set up through the friend of the court. Have you gone through the friend of the court handbook type stuff? You you, you submit it to him if you don't get it. And the percentages that are required on the child support order, if you don't get it, you submit it to the friend of the court. And if he doesn't pay it and that kind of stuff, I mean, I'm not going to order him because I don't know what I don't know what it is old and stuff like that. I have no idea. Okay. So I, I will thank you for that information. I will go that, that route. Follow the friend of the court. And the final matter is um, a request. I should say, Mr. Tobier, and you don't have any problem with that as far as the medical bills. She just has to follow through on what she has to do. No, I agree. I don't have any documentation to say yes or no that that's a le legitimate claim. So I don't disagree that the process should be followed. All right. And finally, she wants something like uh, an app to communicate with uh, your client. Ma'am, can, can you communicate them with? text or something like that? Or do you need some app to go through? I feel like it would be a good idea so that we're all on the same page. And there is not, um, there's, there's a lot of not pleasant things. And it would be nice to have the court like monitoring that so that. I'm not going to monitor it. You're going to have, you know, you'll have to file a motion or something to do it. I, I, I mean, I'm not going to watch what you guys do until it's brought to me. Yeah. You know, my client, I don't, I don't like the idea of, you know, forcing an expense on my client. I don't see any there, um, of poor communication. There are apps out there now that are not ex uh, that do not cost. I think. Well, I thought the court had the Wizard app, and there was no cost. In Our family Wizard is is an app that's out there, but it has a cost to it, as I understand it. It does. Okay. 
Okay. Sam, you, if you want to pay for the costs, you can do it. But I'm assuming you don't want to. There are other apps, Mr. Tobier, and I believe there is yeah. one. I can't come up with a name that, that I thought did not cost. I think it's App Close. Yes. Bingo. Why can't we use that? I will use whatever. I just... I just don't there, think it's... There's Probably not a huge deal, whether they text or whether they go through the app. It just doesn't seem like there's been a real problem. And again, the daughter is 16 years old and I'm sure she has her own cell phone. And I don't know what the point is. And all that kind of stuff. I'm not I'm not sure what the value is. But if somebody usually wants to use app close and it doesn't cost, I don't there's I mean, it's hard for you to argue against it. Yeah, there's not anything. So um, you can use the app close to communicate. Put it on whatever it is, wherever you get it. All right. Thank well, we you. Will set up an evidentiary hearing regarding the custody change of domicile request. Friend of the court, will we will draft that and send that over to the friend of the court for um, the child support. Um, the medical bills is, I mean, it's not, I'm, I don't know what to say. I guess I deny your request for that, although you will go to the friend of the court and we will grant the uh, app close being used. Mr. Tobiran, can you draft that order briefly, quickly? Yes. There was one more thing that was on my list, and that was the um, insurance, carrying the insurance to have, to see if if Rick would um, be able to carry her on the insurance. Currently, I'm paying the full premium plus 60% of medical, on an uncovered yes. medical. You also get credit for it on child support. <clears throat> And so does does Mr. Smith have the ability to carry? Um, I, yes, I, I can I can add her. It's just uh, my response is it's it's already being funded, I guess you want to say, by my child support. So I don't want um, she she originally wanted her on her insurance to begin with. I don't understand why we have to change it now. You, already, the, you didn't have insurance at the time. Well, um, or can address that too if they're going to review child support. Yeah, we'll we'll deal with that at the time of the child support review. See okay. what see what we can do. You can talk to the person who reviews it. Please make sure that you are in contact with the friend of the court when they contact you regarding uh, child support. Provide that information to them. Otherwise, I'm going to. Uh, who knows what I'll do? But uh, it never goes good against somebody who does uh, not uh, provide information to the friend of the court. All right. Good luck, everybody. That'll be the order of the court, Mr. Tobiran. You can send it in under the seven-day rule, which means, ma'am, when you get it, if Mr. Tobiran has done anything uh, in there that is not what my order is, doesn't mean whether you agree with it or not. It's just whether he put into the written order the what I have ordered, okay? And you mm -hmm. can check to it. If you do, you're going to have to set it up for a hearing and show why. All right? So there's nothing that I need to do. I do not need to go oh, file anything. No, but what you do need to do is when he gets that to you, you've got very limited time, seven days to object. And if you object to that order, you better have specifics about it. All right. Good luck, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good weekend. You too. Thanks. Hello. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Hello. What's your name? Aaron Fields. Mr. Fields? Yes. All right. And, all right. Stay on for a minute, Miss. Uh, okay. Yeah. We have somebody who just identified as iPhone, ma'am. What's your name, please? Paris Williams. Oh yeah, we had here. Did you log yeah. out or something? It this it keep on dropping. All right. Well, we'll put you back in there, and we'll get to you. Um, it's a matter of Van Dyke versus Fields. We have Mr. Fields on a telephone on the Zoom. Uh, account here. We also have Ms. Rummel from the prosecutor's office. The plaintiff, Ms. Van Dyke, has never logged in. Uh, this is a motion brought by Ms. Rummel regarding a judgment of paternity uh, for entry. It's clear. Uh, Mr. Fields, did you get a copy of the DNA test? Uh, yes, I did. It shows you're the father. You understand uh, that? Correct. All right. Then we will enter a judgment of paternity. The, uh, the second issue that uh, we have to deal with relates to um, child support. 
And uh, that that order that has been presented by Ms. Rumholt says that uh, you actually you have actual income that she's been able to see at sixteen fifty an hour times forty hours. Um, so that that figure is used for your income, Mother Miss Van Dyke. We don't have information about her, but the prosecutor has uh, entered uh, a potential income for her at minimum wage of ten dollars and ten cents. Now, um, she stated, uh, Miss Van Dyke stated that she estimated that she earned two hundred dollars a month um, at some point based on babysitting and stuff. She has no high school diploma or GED. Um, and um, very little is known about her. I, I assume, Ms. Rummelt, that she was not forthcoming with much information? No, during the pre-hearing conference that was held December 12th, um, she did state that she had sort of an unlicensed daycare or a babysitting gig where she took kids in, but it depended on how many kids she got. Um, and it was about that $200 a month that she earned from that endeavor. All right. Well, quite frankly, nowadays, um, the unemployment around here is virtually nothing. Uh, fast food places and stuff are looking for people all the time, um, to fill usually at 13, $14 an hour. I don't see a reason why she should not be able to, um, make that kind of money, um, and so um, imputing her at minimum wage at $10.10 times, uh, I guess I would say, looks like you, you imputed her at 20 hours a week. Is that correct? I put her at 35 hours a week. Um, I'm sorry. I missed that. I think that's appropriate because she can, she can go out and at minimum wage, she can, she can find a job better than minimum wage just by going to fast food places. So I believe it's appropriate after going through the factors that you imputed her at 35 hours times 10, 10 mm -hmm. and use that for the calculation. Sir, do you have anything to say about uh, the uniform child support order? We agreed on like, um, it was like $300 or something like that. Well, so that's all I was going to say. I don't know. Oh, you'd have to, you have to come in with a reason for deviation, and the court will probably agree with it, but we don't have anything from her to indicate that she agreed to it at this point. So, uh, okay. So, the amount that I will order is the 429. If the two of you can agree, I mean, actually, can give you, if you're paying it, she can give you back some money. But um, there is state assistance being used, so I'm not sure what part goes to her and what part goes to the state as it is. So, uh, you can't make an agreement to short the state for money. All right. So you guys can work on that and see how you do that. Well, I'll enter the two orders, Ms. Rommel, when you send them to me via DocuSign. Okay. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fields. Yep. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. This is a motion by the mother um, because the child in for child support is over 18 and in college. Y esa es una motion que fue entablada de la madre. Este, del menor en términos de manutención porque ya está en la universidad. Sí. Are you saying yeah. that, you're, that you're still getting child support for her? Sí. Yes. Is it for past child support or is it current? I, I keep uh, I keep getting it through the court. I mean, I keep getting it, but I thought when she turned 18, it was going to go away. But you still also have one other child too, right? But I don't want to take away from the youngest one, just with the oldest one. Okay. I understand that. And I will terminate child support for um, Emily. Okay, and, uh, they should be ordered to the friend of the court to immediately stop. Um, uh, so the child support then, the the amount, I guess, would be 639 now because it was 800 when Emily was. I never got 800. I will get 649. Well, that's child support for one child is $639. The checks that I will get every month I will be two checks that I will receive, and each one will be three, uh, 339. I don't know. I don't know if some of that's for past child support. Was the father in arrears? He, uh, he's always been up to date. All right. I will issue an order that uh, eliminates Emily from child support. And according yes. 
And according to the November 16, 2021, child support should be $639 for your one child, Jack. All right. Está bien. Good luck. Buena suerte. Thank you very much. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Romero. Have a good weekend. Yes. You too. Have a great ride. Both parties are present via Zoom. They have a child in common by the name of Kenneth. This is father's motion to enforce parenting time and legal custody. He says that mom has taken Kenneth and moved to Arizona. Uh, well, she moved to Arizona, and, and according to the defendant, he sent the child down there over Christmas and has not uh, had the return of the child. Is that cr true, ma'am? Um, the truth is, Kenneth was supposed to come on me August 1st. Kenneth has took my child twice. Plane tickets have been bought, and he will not return. We had a verbal agreement that Kenneth will go to school with me and come and see him every spring break, summer break, Christmas, and Thanksgiving. He took my child and said he wasn't sending him. My child said he didn't want to come out for Christmas break. When he came down here, he said he didn't want to go back. He wanted to stay with me. And right. I have the proof that he took my child every single time and ran off with him. When plane tickets were bought, he had me thinking he was going to take my child, and he never brought him. Oh, can All right, we have we have a custody order from actually 2011 that gave initial yes. custody to mother. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing is stated anywhere about joint legal custody. As this point, there's nothing uh, in there. Um, on 2014, in 2014, I believe it stated that the parties had been back together for some period of time. I don't know what, but there was a parenting order. And 42821, that uh, father was to receive every other weekend and two evenings per week. Uh, there was another parenting yes. in 2021 that dealt with holidays. And then father made another motion for parenting time in 2023 that was denied. Um, yes. But here's, here's the problem is he's entitled to parenting time every other weekend, which is impossible to do from Arizona, but he's entitled to it. Um, what are we supposed to do with this? Because me and Kenneth had a verbal agreement. Before I came down here on May 27th, we made a verbal agreement. We spoke on the phone. He agreed to every spring break, every summer break, every Thanksgiving, every Christmas, any holiday longer than seven days. He agreed to that. We had a verbal agreement. We didn't go through the courts. Am, we had I'm a verbal just, agreement. I'm, he agreed I'm just to it. asking you, how do I enforce a verbal agreement if he says no, he didn't? Uh, how, how, I, can show, I can show proof. You can show a verbal agreement? I can show proof, the text messages and everything. Yes, he agreed to that. I have the proof. You have text messages that he agreed to it? Yes, yes written I'm messenger. Yes. Because I, I can't it's, agree to a verbal one. I would like to see that myself. Now, you know, we spoke know in person we and we spoke about, on the we internet. Had, we had, we had, we had um, talked about it. And when I talked to Kenneth, Kenneth didn't want to move down there. He just wanted to visit. And he, and then and when he we told me that he never told that, you that. Said, on one at a time. And when, when when we talked to mom about it, she said, no, you're not staying there. You're moving up here with me. But you're like, mom, but I, I have everything, too. But mom, I really want to stay here. He even screenshotted and sent me messages with him asking her, can he just stay here? And she kept telling him, no, he have to move up there with her. And why did he screenshot them to you? Why did he screenshot them to you? He told me the same thing to. because you were threatening him. Because you were threatening him. He was yelling son. at him. So That's why. Stop this, please. Stop okay. This, please. Okay. Never, okay. Record well, any. Hold on. Business? Somebody needs to speak to me. Nobody, if everybody's talking at the same time, it doesn't make any sense. The bottom line is this. Mother has physical custody. There's no determination of legal custody. However, generally, uh, it is determined that um, you can't leave the state without permission of either the defendant or the court. <laughs> However, because she has sole legal custody or legal custody has never been determined, I should say, um, I don't know. You almost have to have a hearing to be able to move to Arizona with the child, to move the child to Arizona. Now, obviously, I could have a hearing, and if she can show me all kinds of text messages or something that says, yes, she can go there and take Kenneth, well, that sounds to me like uh, an agreement on your part, sir. If she doesn't, then I have that. Then Kenneth probably needs her. How old is Kenneth? 14. He's 14. He's, how long has he been down there then, ma'am? He's uh, been he's, down here since December during Christmas break. So he's he was supposed in, to come. He was supposed. He he was enrolled, but Kenneth gave paperwork to the school, and they won't transfer over his paperwork. So now they won't even accept him because he gave court paperwork. So now they wait for his IEP and other information until he can go to Anderson High School. I mean, middle school. They won't accept him because he gave paperwork stating about court. So they told me I have to wait till court to even get him in school. 
So Kenneth's not even enrolled in school down there? He's enrolled, yes. He is. They have all this information, but they're I, uh, Alger is telling me they won't just any of his information because his dad gave court paperwork about school. I mean, about uh, about custody hearing. So they won't transfer his IEP or any other information. But they Anderson down here has all his information, and they're ready to enroll him. But because of Kenneth doing whatever he did with the paperwork, Alger won't send over none of his information. Bottom line is your son is not attending school. He no, he's he not. Here. He's enrolled, but he won't. They won't send over none of his paperwork because of the situation. He's enrolled, but he hasn't been because Alger won't send over his paperwork. All right, Mr. Uh, McBride, what have you got to say? Do not interrupt him, Ms. Burns. Um, like I was saying, sir, we talked about it, and I said I'm going to talk to Kenneth about it. Mm -hmm. Kenneth didn't want to move down there. He wanted to stay That's here with me. Let, me cause, let me talk, please. Kenneth wanted to stay here with me, so I let him, I let, I made, because he's 14, I let him make a decision of his own. I'm not going to force my son to move somewhere out of state and I asked Tamika plenty of times can I please get an address if I'm sending my son out of state can I get an address she will not give me an address I got an address it was a fake address we mailed the letter off which is this letter right here and it came back in the mail because you gave me a fake address so I like that's why I, down like, the I, wrong information. Feel, I felt like I didn't want to send my son for that reason right there because I don't want to send my no. son out of state where I don't know where nothing nothing with him whatsoever I don't know if she's in good harm nothing me and her baby daddy had bad terms I don't even know if my son in good hands down there like that. Tamika can't keep a house for a long period of time. Here, this, he kept getting addicted. Uh, all right, hold on. Every other house he's been in, I don't Excuse feel me, with Judge, my son he put there. down 685. My mailing address is 683. I screenshotted him yesterday and told him he sent the wrong address. He knew what he was doing. I gave him a no, mailing address due to, due to the fact that he always calls CPS and the police to every single house that I have every time he's getting mad. My baby him, daddy, no, let me talk. My baby daddy has nothing to do with anything. If that's the case, I could bring up the fact that your girlfriend told me not to send my son back because you can't take care of him and you don't have a house to live in because she don't want you there. So right we're not here. talking about that. We're not talking about that. Talk about you and talk about how you told me that you want you agreed to everything and then you went back and denied it and then had your girlfriend run off with my son when my mama came to pick him up and you told him you ain't know where he was at so stop with the lies because all this is lies stop it you agreed to it we can go we, we, we go on the trial we go wherever I got all the proof that you agreed to it so we can take I've heard it enough there. now from you I asked to hear from Mr McBride I told you not to interrupt I've heard from this you I'm just trying to get his side of the story Mr McBride. Put your face on the camera also. I'm here, sir. It's just I, every time she yells and stuff, I just got to put the phone on because she does this all the time. I can't talk to her. This is what I get all the time. Regardless, we can't even have an adult conversation He's with him to even uh, come to any type of agreement with him. Have you filed any kind of complaint with the friend of the court for missing the parenting time? You no, know why? Um, um, yes, I, I have. That's why we're in court right now. That's why we're going through this right no, now. No, that's not why we're in court because you filed a motion. Any time that you were ordered to have um, parenting time every other weekend and two evenings a week, okay? And if you're mm -hmm. not getting it because, Mom, you need to file a complaint with the friend of the court because then they will determine what's going on. And I may hold Ms. Barnes in contempt if she's not allowing that parenting time. In the meantime, I'm going to have to set up some kind of a evidentiary hearing to determine, um, I, I guess, where Kenneth should live. Uh, in this matter, uh, because I don't, I don't know, I don't know why Kenneth wants to be with you or with her. I have no idea. And and this is, is there any way that anybody could speak to him? It's gone on for a long time, and I'm going to have to have some kind of evidentiary hearing regarding, uh, I guess, regarding custody. Mm -hmm. To make That's a determination because there is no legal custody determination will include physical and legal custody. You both will get notices of it, ma'am. I most I always have my hearings in court, but you're living in Arizona, correct? Yes. All right. Um, if you want, and I assume you want, I will probably let you participate by a Zoom as opposed to flying up here. All right. Um, okay. But you're still going to have to follow the other stuff. Like if you have evidence, like supposedly um, statements through text and what that he has made. You're going to have to make copies of them. You're going to have to give copies to Mr. McBride because before you introduce them or before I read them, he's got to see them. All right? That's fine. If you don't do that. I will not look at it and will not consider it as evidence. That's perfectly fine. All right. So uh, we'll send out notice to both of you. Um, at some point, I'm going to also talk to Kenneth because I don't know where he wants to be. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, right I wanted to do that last time, Judge, to be honest with you. 
You want what? I wanted you to talk to Kenneth the last time we had our um, hearing because, you know, I, I'd rather for him to explain where he'd rather be at and how he feel comfortable instead of me and mom just study fussing and arguing back and forth over the phones. I understand, but it's the facts of life. You guys can't get along, so I'm going to have to make a determination whether Kenneth should live in Arizona or That's here. Fine. And if he lives in Arizona, what kind of time does he get? If he lives here, what kind of time does mom get? Okay. That's the way it's got to be. And it, that's, I'm, that's this will be me, in the sir. next couple of weeks, but I'll get you on as soon as I can. Make sure you look at the notice and send in the appropriate information or I will not have it here. Okay. Ma'am, you okay. have to make copies and send stuff in so that I can have it, if you will. All right. Unless you plan. I will. That's it. no problem. All right. All right. But you must send copies to Mr. McBride. If he doesn't get those, you know. Oh, he'll get them. And, and also. And, and let Mr. McBride talk to his son out there. He does. He talks to his son all the time. His son has a phone. Oh, all right. All right. Is there any way you could get him to release my son to go to school while the time that he's here so he don't be out of school while until we're going through this? Mr. McBride, get him yes, in sir. school. Get him in school. I'm going to make a determin determination where he's going to be. But don't don't have him sit out of school for a month, two months, three months, whatever it is, until we can figure this out. Thank you. Okay. You're going to do that? I'm yes, sir. I'm going to call the school. Soon. I told the school as soon as we got off the phone, like when I got done with the court and everything, I was going to call them and let them know what to do with the school records. Please do that because otherwise you're only hurting your son. I know. I know. I will do that. All right. Good luck, everyone. We'll send you notice. Thanks. I understand we have Emily watching here today. Morning, Emily. How are you? All right, Mr. Carlson, Miss Carlson, welcome back. Haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Carlson, can you hear me? Yes. I think I have this. I think we rescheduled this motion to make sure that everything got done on that timeshare. Is it done? Uh, Your Honor, I, I do have an update on January 11, the timeshare of the title company sent both uh, Ms. Carlson and I an email with documents attached. On January 17, I had that information, my part of it, notarized and sent it back priority mail. As of yesterday, uh, January 25, I called to verify that they had received all the information and they have received everything except Ms. Carlson's information at this point. What is the information? I mean, her driver's license? She no, she has to have uh, the documentation notarized as well. And they, they sent us each a, a a format and I bring in a portion and have notarized. She also needs to bring in some information and have notarized indicating that she is in agreement to have her name pulled off. And then it goes uh, to court in Florida for a, uh, I believe they, it's a quick claim deed, I believe they called it. So we're just waiting right now to... Uh, get her information down there and then they can uh, send it to court and go from there. Ms. Carlson. Um, it was shipped on Friday, January 19th. And I have the receipts of that right here. Um, and the cost of it was 30, 31 53 in order to do that. Cause I had to have it notarized as well and witnessed. So it was done. I have both receipts verifying that it was shipped. All right. do, do those receipts show if it was received yet or no, just so that they were shipped. Because I I, I know it, it took about five days for mine to make it down there. And that was even sending a priority mail. All right. Then it sounds like everybody's done what they're supposed to. If you sent yours on the 19th, ma'am, where well, we are we? The 26th, they should have it. Now it would seem and things should be proceeding. Um, stay in touch with the people down there to make sure that it gets done. I I really can't control what they do. Okay. I, I can't do that much with it, um, but make sure everything is done. If there's any other requests, you must take care of it promptly. Uh, other than that, it appears that we're moving along towards getting that taken care of. Your Honor, yes. Your Honor the, uh, the the title company, when I spoke to her, said once everything's there, it's about a 45 to 60 day wait for it to go through the court system and get the uh, quick claim deed. All right, ma'am, what do you have to say? Um, That's all. I mean, I know I've sent my piece in. Now I'm just waiting to hear back from them. Um, but I am asking for reimbursement because I've had to take so many half days off of work. Mr. Carlson does not work. I work two jobs and I can't afford to keep doing this. And I've had to do it several times in light of 
last February. And I would like to get reimbursement for that, including today, which is another $150 with a total of $810 reimbursement. I mean, for this for, as I recall last time, you were asking for parking fees and all kinds of stuff. Yep. That, all related to that were outrageous. I'll just say that. Okay. Okay. Well, at least my time off work isn't outrageous. I, I don't. Uh, I don't know why uh, you're telling me you got to take time off work. You're on Zoom. No, I have to go down to the court, file a motion. I have to go down to the court to pick up motion paperwork. There are four times I've had to go to the court and I had yeah. to go down. Pardon? You got lunchtime. You got after work. You got. I don't know. I don't. I work from 8, 8, 7.30 a.m. to sometimes 8 p.m. I don't have that flexibility. Every day? Every day. I'm uh, I'm going to respectfully you. deny your request at this point. If other if, things happen, I'll I'll look at it at that time. Well, how do I file another motion then to have that relooked at? Because I I don't agree with that. That's all right. I'll issue an order there. and it'll say on there. All right. It'll okay. say on there if you wish to appeal it. You can appeal it to Judge Hillary and and determine uh, if he wants to do that. Okay. Which will make you take more time off, which will of course be at your time. Correct. So was, I'm going to respectfully deny it at this point. Good luck, everyone. Uh, um, I hope it gets taken care of. I still have another uh, motion to enforce the equalization of our pensions that I was unable to do all these years because I didn't have the financial resources and I have to pay half of that. And now I have that. When was that motion? It was, I filed it. It was part of today. Well, part of today, we, we set this up. Then there was three other motions following. <clears throat> One was the PPO, which we dealt with. The Mr. The judge Bill. already heard you guys this morning. What? Weren't you in front of the judge already this morning? Yep, for the PPO and the sealed copies. And then we were sent over to you for the enforcement of equalization of educational pensions and the rest of the timeshare stuff. The motion that I have, the last motion that I had that you sent in, ma'am, was for a hearing on, uh, I wish I was 1229. The motion was to enforce. The motion states, it says supplement to motion. All these, which doesn't have anything in the supplement to motion. So I have in front of me from your office, the Judge Frederick on 126, 24, 830 a.m. motion to enforce the equalization of educational pensions. And they were all signed and delivered. I had them hand delivered to Mr. Carlson along with the PPO information. Notice that went to use as motion to enforce doesn't say anything about equalization or anything. In the motion, it does. In the motion that you filed when? Um, on... I've got a motion, that, a supplemental motion that was filed on 12-15, refile motion to enforce name removal from uh, timeshare in Orlando. Motion yep. to enforce the order and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't say anything about equalization. So there was a motion, the motion for the sealed reports and the motion for um, the equalization of, pen, of pensions. They were also done at the same time as the, re, the resubmitted ones. I paid for them. I gave them. They did it at the clerk's office and they sent them out. Well, didn't send them out. I had to have them hand delivered. So I'm not sure why you don't have that, but it was to enforce the equalization of educational pensions. And I had limited funds my when entire was, life. When was that filed with the court? Um, doesn't have a date. It just says the date that we're going is the 26th. Oh, it was, was filed <laughs> one four one four twenty four. Mr. Carlson, do you know what she's talking about? I, I Your Honor, I have it too. I was I, I was served a uh, basically a briefcase of papers with four separate motions in there. So I was not even sure who to go to and how to do this this morning. In fact, I had to call your clerk to find out where I go first. I have that motion. I didn't know who was hearing it. I, I thought uh, perhaps uh, Judge Hillary was hearing it. Uh, then uh, he adjourned and uh, we moved over to you. And it was filed on one four along yes, with their file down there. I believe the judge has that motion. And 
The clerk, I believe the judge has that motion. And I don't have it. And I don't know what, I, I just simply don't have it. And I believe the judge has it. Your, your, your Honor, he uh, he sent another motion for us uh, in, in regards to the sealed documents on March 8th. Could that one just be moved over for March 8th then? And we'll just deal with that then with him or... I, I suppose because I don't have it here. So I'm, I, I don't even know how to rule on it because I don't have anything in my file. You, the judge has things. I will check with the judge afterwards. And it's about equalization of pensions, the educational pensions, equalization of pension. I'll find out because I don't have it. Did you provide a judge? She did. The clerk at Judge Hillary doesn't know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. Well, I did it right there at the clerk's office. They filled out the paperwork, at the form, and then I had them and all. And they filled out the form. Correct. Like the notice, of hear the notice of hearing I did. And then they, I paid them the $20 for each one. And I have the receipts for those on the 4th. But I don't know what you're, I mean, did you file a motion? I did file a motion. It says notice of hearing in motion. That's a notice of hearing in motion. I don't care about that. Well, that's what I have. That's what they gave me. Well, I don't have it, so I can't rule on it. I'll see if the court has it anywhere somewhere. If we do, we'll contact and set up a date and time. If not, I don't know what to tell you. I don't I don't know what you're I don't even know what you're talking about as far as them setting up a hearing or not. Um, I don't know what your claim was in your motion. What did you write in your motion? I wrote to um all I said was to enforce the equalization of educational pe pensions that I've not been able to do this financially until this time um, due to limited funds. So I asked for that to be now because now I can pay half of it to get the, the funds equalized because Mr. Carlson had more years at the time than I did because I stayed home with kids and did Was that work. something in your judgment? Yes, it was part of the judgment of divorce. We'll take a look and see if there's something out there. And if so, we'll set up a time. Good luck. I, I just don't have anything, so I can't rule on it. Okay, so what, what should I do moving forward with that? Re refile it? If you say you already paid the fee, then I wouldn't make you pay the fee again. I'd, you'd have to refile it, but it would just be a re-notice. Re but I got to find the, the motion itself that you sent in. So it was on the floor. I don't know whether or not you just took the motion with you, maybe. I, I, I don't know. Well, they gave me two copies, one for myself and one for Jeff, and then gave, kept two copies for you guys and stapled all the papers together at the clerk's office. Uh, my clerk will look into it after we get done here today, but that's all I can do. I, I just okay. don't get it. So, uh, Mr. Carlson, do you know what you're yes, talking about as far as equalization and stuff? Yes, uh, Your, Your Honor, that was something that, uh, and, and I can't remember which attorney she had at the time, but one of one of uh, her attorneys brought that up, and I talked to uh, Miss uh, my former attorney, Miss Rathburn, and uh, she actually indicated that, that uh, I guess the way that was written is that was Jean's responsibility to start that process. Okay, but if she, if she started it, then why don't you get this stuff done? Th no, that was, she, it was never started, Your Honor, the process. So she's saying she started it now. She started the motion. Uh, yeah, I don't even know what to do with it at this point. I don't know. We'll see what's going on and try and get you notice of what, what we need. All right. I, I did get two names of people that do that equalization. One is a Jenny Johnson. Yes. And uh, the other uh, was through a, a corporation or company called, I believe it's Quadro Express. Yep. So the one that they put in our judgment was Miller, and I contacted them. Miller, Miller, the Miller, whole law firm. yeah, Miller Johnson. What? You know. Yes, that was what was in our judgment of divorce to, and that we were both supposed to pay half to have it equalized. All right. So why don't why don't you two figure out somehow a way to have it equalized? And some, I mean, Jenny <laughs> Johnson. I doubt you're going to use Miller Johnson now because it's how long? How old is that judgment? That's about 17 years old, Your Honor. And what's going to make this more difficult is I've, uh, Judge Hillary signed a PPO, so I cannot have any communication with Ms. Carlson outside of this right here, obviously. So I, you know, obviously can't violate a uh, personal yep. protection. 
right? All right. Well, I don't know what to tell you because all I'm going to, if I, even if I grant the motion, if I can find the motion, all I'm going to do is say, yes, you got to get to work and spend each of you got to do what you have to to equalize it. Go to a quadro specialist to to do something. I don't even know uh, the pension the 17 years old who, who controls them and stuff like that. It's controlled through the uh, through the uh, teachers association. It's right. uh, it, it's basically through Lansing. All right, ma'am. Why don't you make contact with them in Lansing and see what you got to do? Okay, I know that they need his information, so he will also have to call them because they need to know what his pension was at that time. I have they, no idea what it was 17 years That's ago. why you have to call them. Well, um, I guess I would give you the ability to text him the information that he has to, that, who he has to contact to start this process. Okay. And not find it to be a PPO violation. Your response isn't necessary because she's going to send it to you of who to contact to do this kind of stuff and to find out what it is. All right. Sounds good, Your Honor. And then just take it from there. All right. Uh, All right. Now, you. Is, your, is your office still going to look for that motion and set something yeah, up? Yeah, they're going to look for it. But, we'll, but there's no reason that the two of you can't get it started because what I mean, Ma'am, what am I going to order? Yes. Well, just to, the fact that it needs to get done. And I and I have the ability to now start this process. And, and what I don't do is I don't issue an order to follow an order. If it was a prior order, you got to well, follow it. Well, it was just to have it enforced. All right. But you don't have it. So I'll just work on my end and get it rolling. And like I say, you can text him the information because otherwise he's going to come in and say, I don't know. And I'm going right. to say, okay, then give him the information. Well, I will email him the information. Email him information. Sir, you don't have to respond to it because you got a PPO. True, true. Uh, right. Now, okay, I'll, uh, right. I'll, I'll, I'll wait to hear something one way or another. All right, good luck, everybody. We'll All right, right. thank you. Back you. Thank you. Bye-bye. DM, both parties are present via Zoom. Other house, you just kind of vanished. Are you still there? Yes, I'm here. All right, do you have a camera? Yeah, it's not working currently. I was trying to get it to start. All right. Well, everybody acknowledges this is her, I take it, so I can proceed. Um, as I say, both parties are present by Zoom. We have Ms. Schmidt representing the plaintiff, Ms. House, Mr. Gordon representing the defendant, Mr. House. This is a motion filed by the uh, defendant, uh, Mr. Gordon, for specific parenting time. There was a judgment of divorce from 6 2 22. The parenting time was as agreed between the parties. Um, Apparently, Mr. House has moved to Indiana and seeks a specific parenting time, which I must uh, hear. I mean, I, I have to have a hearing or or something regarding specific parenting time uh, when requested. Um, is there any, I mean, have the parties, um, you, Mr. Gordon and Ms. Schmidt, talked about some way of dealing with this or something? Um, no, Your Honor. I mean, I, from, from me reading their uh, response, I think what they would like to do is to go to the front of the court. And I think what she's um, proposing is that Mr. House have some parenting time during the interim here in Michigan. Um, we, 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 of course, would want him to be Where able to- Where does he live? Parent, I, I, I'm sorry? Where does he live? Indiana's a big state. He lives in Indiana on the north part. He actually has another child in uh, Elkhart, Indiana, and he has he has alternating weekends overnight with that child. So, Where did, so like, how far does he live from Grand Rapids? I mean, so ha halfway, Your Honor, would be uh, Kalamazoo. Well, then he must, Mr. House, you must live just inside the Indiana border. Yes. All right. Um, all right, and so both parties want to. Uh, it also requests uh, for mediation. I think both parties have requested mediation or friend of the court. Um, yeah, I, I mean, from from uh, my perspective, Your Honor, um, and I, I agree with what you stated, under the law, the court has to order some sort of specific parenting time schedule. And so my thought would be either we have a evidentiary hearing schedule with Your Honor, or we refer it to the friend of the court. And then what I would want to do is the try mediation in the interim uh, with an agreement that Mr. House does get at least alternating weekends here in Michigan so he can see the children, and then also at least one or two 
um, evenings, he does work until five or six, uh, where he can call the children because that has been an issue. And I think one of the big reasons that he hired me is he can't work it out with her and he can't even speak with his children. Okay, so can, I ask, can I ask this order, question? Uh, the response says he works six days a week, so he doesn't have the time. He does that. Mr. Time. House, can you, can you in the interim um, come up to Grand Rapids and see your kids for the weekend? Yes. Then, Ms. Schmidt, I can't think of any reason why he shouldn't have that. Can you? No, as long as it's here in Grand Rapids until, as Mr. Gordon said, we either go to front of the court and I am also amenable to mediation. I think, I think you should try mediation. I, I mean, you guys both do that kind of stuff. And and can you agree on a mediator? Sure. Yeah. Any, yeah. any hints on who, who you'd like so that if we can agree here or something? I like uh, Mr. Well, Danton. I think, uh, I think uh, Mary Benedict does a, does a very good job. She's reasonably priced and yeah. she gets to the point. So I don't know about. Ms. Schmidt uh, has suggested Mike Dantema. Do you? I like Mike Dantema too. And I think <laughs> he does a good a good job with these types of cases. Uh, yeah. I mean, can you guys agree on, on that here? And we could just get it. I'd like to get it going. Okay. I mean, I want to move this case along. He, clearly dad's going to have parenting time. Clearly. He doesn't, I mean, it's not like he lives in Indiana or excuse me, Indianapolis, where it's a five hour trip. He, he's heck, he could live in uh, Cadillac and it'd be just as close as, as that would be. So he's going to get some time and, and probably something like every other weekend and, and things like that is what I, what I would look at. Um, but for the time being right now, we can agree that he will have every other weekend from, I don't know what time he can get here. Um, well, my understanding is it's a three hour drive, two, two and a half to three hour drive from his house to Grand Rapids. So what? He's got to make it. Okay. All right. I mean, it's just not that it's not that big a deal. I have plenty of people who travel from Traverse City or more to and, and see their kids. OK, um, so it's not it's not that huge a deal. But he has agreed that he'll come up every other weekend. Um, when would you be here, Mr. House or where? Mr. Gordon, do you know where he would stay with the kids? Where well, he generally, he gets a, a hotel. And so he he has been exercising time um, up until there was a financial disagreement. And then I think he got cut off. Um, so he's actually had the children at his uh, residence in Indiana. And as I mentioned, he does have overnights with his other child. He, is, he has not had overnights uh, with the girls in this case um, in Indiana, but he has had them. They have seen their bedroom. It is appropriate. Right. And Mr. So Mr. House, um, you when can you get the kids is what I'm asking. Because if you're working Friday and you do have several hours or something like that, I'd like to work something out. Quite honestly, what I'd like to do and what I'm going to order is every every other weekend, you can have them from whatever start time. I don't know when the start time should be. Um, whether And I'm going to suggest and I'm going to order that every other one of those can be exercised in Indiana until we get to someplace. OK, so you'll come up this this next time that you get parenting time, you're going to come up and exercise it in Grand Rapids. The next time you're going to exercise it, but you're going to have to do the travel um, in Indiana. Okay. But what time are you looking at? I mean, do you, what time do you get off work? So fr I have Fridays off. I work uh, Saturdays from nine to five and I have Sundays off. Who's going to watch the kids while you're working? Uh, my grandparents. That live there? Yeah, they live here. Well, Your Honor, these children don't know any of his family. They have never met his parents. In fact, it was my understanding from my client that they don't he doesn't even have much of a relationship with them. They have never met these parents, these his parents, the grandparents. Would you ever. rather the kids be in daycare? Miss House? I mean it's um, ridiculous. There's not available on Saturdays, so I'm not very sure how that would work, but my children um, have no relationship with his parents. So it would be dropping them off with strangers, which is not the an idea. Was, Ms. House, the question was, do you prefer daycare? Yes. Let's drop them off with, day with strangers. Well, hold on, Your Honor. My, my, my understanding is the children have met their grandparents. <laughs> look at that. So that is not even accurate hold at on. all. Oh, just, hold on. Uh, I've got this under control, okay? okay. I mean, strangers are strangers. Daycare are strangers, all right? <laughs> And I have no reason to believe that his parents are going to, um, you know, serve up the children for dinner. 
<laughs> so uh, I, I'm I'm going to go with it at this point. Uh, that's that's going to be my order. You can do some. You can appeal it if you want. But um, and then you're going to go to Mike Dantema for um, this matter. Yes. Yes. And um, what is the start time on his Friday here in Michigan? Not till next Friday. That'll no. be his first one. Okay. Right. What time? And Mr. House, what time? How, uh, how are you going to work it out if you got to have the weekend up here and you work Saturday? What do you mean? Well, you're going to have, you got a weekend. Next weekend, you can have the kids here in Grand Rapids. Okay. All right. When are you going to get them? I can get them on Fridays. All right, but the kids go to school, so Friday at four o'clock. Yeah, whenever they get off. Yeah. Uh, are they are they available by four o'clock, ma'am? School dismisses at four. All right, five o'clock. You'll have you'll have the kids from five o'clock till five o'clock on Sunday. Now, what are you going to do with work that you got to work on Saturday? Uh, I don't care. You you get the kids, okay? Okay. And then two weeks later. You'll have the kids in Indiana for the weekend. Your parents okay. will act as daycare providers. Okay, you're only you only work during the day, so it's not right. Yep. And then the parties are going. And then the next two weeks later, you'll have them up here until we can figure this out. All right. Okay. You must notify mother where you are. Okay. You understand that? I mean, if you're if you're getting a room at the holiday in, she's got a right to know where you're going to be with the kids. All right. Okay. Yep. Must inform her ahead of time. I'm going to be staying at such and such a place. All right. Okay. And I assume that he's allowed to contact the kids every Tuesday and Thursday or something. We can we can do that via phone or FaceTime or something at seven o'clock. Thank you. Okay. All right. And dad's doing the traveling. Um, I'm doing, Dad's doing the traveling right now. Okay. Meeting at her house? I suppose. That that may change when you guys mediate it or when I have an evidentiary hearing about it. But sure. right now, um, since he's got to make the trip anyhow to be here in Grand Rapids, he can make the... Sorry, sir, but you can make the trip. All right? Yeah. Yep. So dropping him off. Five o'clock till five o'clock is the time on the weekends. One of them is here, one of them is down there, one of them is back here until until we get there. Mediation with Mike Dantema. Um, should I, I would just soon wait, but but then that'll push you farther out. If I, um, do I need to set a parenting time evidentiary hearing or should I wait until Mr. Dantema sees if he can figure it out? Well, Your Honor, I given the court docket and I understand you are swamped, I would prefer that we get a date on on the docket. Um, but it's not going to be wrong. early. And and if you guys figure this out and you don't contact me immediately to get rid of that date, you will go on the really bad list. Okay? <laughs> I promise okay. you. We well, number one, I think we're going to resolve this case with your help with what you ordered today. I think we're going to get somewhere. Um, and so we will notify the court immediately. I don't want to waste your docket at all. Yeah, because I want you both to get into Mr. Dantum and tell him it's kind of in a hurry because you got a time slot. Yes, and, and absolutely. Like I say. If you if you get close to it and you haven't and you go oh yeah we just settled it um, you will go on the naughty list and no you, no no you will be late I'm going to let you know immediately I promise you Your Honor I promise you all right I've Mr. been Smith, on your naughty you list that? by the way so what? what's that I said I, I I've been on the naughty list I think I've been taken off the naughty list but I'm You're not on the naughty problem. list I don't have you I don't have any problem with you you're subject to going back on it just hard right. okay. Your Honor. I yes. also have one other concern is that while Mr. House is transporting these children, he must use appropriate restraints at Absolutely. all times. Absolutely. No sitting the kids on his whatever. lap. I understand. Uh, and, and absolutely. If you're if you're not using whatever the appropriate seat is or something, and I and somehow somebody finds out, uh, you're gonna lose a lot of your rights to that. Okay. Talk to Mr. Gordon about it. Don't mess around with this kind of stuff. All right. Yep. Anything else, Ms. Schmidt? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Gordon? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Gordon, you can draft the order since it's your motion get it and send it to Ms. Schmidt. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. Good luck, everyone. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Take thank care. You. Thank you. Jared. Thank you.
uh, both parties are present via Zoom. This is regarding Braylon, who I think is 12. Um, this is Dad's motion regarding custody. He's been, well, let me go back. Uh, 2017, there was a uh, judge, there was an order that gave mom legal and physical custody and father supervised parenting time. Father was in Tennessee, I believe. And uh, 10 uh, of 21, there was a stipulated order that he did not need to be supervised anymore. He would have a majority of the summer uh, down with dad uh, in Tennessee. Um, we're at this point now where father's filed a custody motion saying that he wants, he's returned from Tennessee uh, and now wants 50-50. That pretty much states what your motion says, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Well, um, ma'am, I don't, I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but quite frankly, to change custody as you're requesting, you need to meet uh, the principles found in a case called Vidbarka, which means there has to be a change of circumstance or proper cause. You moving from back here is not a change of circumstance that uh, could have a substantial effect on the child's life. It has an effect on your life but you want to change custody to 50-50, and quite frankly, you don't meet the Vudvarka standard uh, to get 50-50 at this point. Um, however, I guess I would agree that we got to figure out something uh, regarding parenting time because you're living back here, and it doesn't make any sense to give you the summer as if you're in Tennessee. Anything you want to say, sir? Uh, yes, I'm willing to do whatever type of order it takes for me to get 50-50. Um, Braylon is my only child. It's not a question um, of do anything you want to get 50-50. Uh, There's an established custodial environment with mother, and you have to meet the dark, which means a change of circumstance or proper cause, and you just don't have it at this point. Correct. So, meaning um, I filed this motion just so the court could just know and understand that I'm willing and I'm trying to take the steps to be able to take care of my son basically half of the time. Um, I understand that it might take some proceedings to get the physical joint legal part of it. But as far as me spending time with him, I'm just uh, filing this motion so I can get as much time as possible with my child. What is your current parenting time with the child? Um, I believe it was just set up for summertime. All right. Like some random holidays. Ms. Fritz, Ms. Fritz yes. Um, yes. he's back. And it's, I mean, the last order basically gave him a big chunk of the summer in Tennessee. I think it, there was like a July 14th, somewhere around there. He came back for a while and then went back down there. Isn't that correct? I'm just going on memories. So. Um, that's what our order was, yes, but that's not how it played out. All right. Well, he's back. And uh, what are you suggesting he should have his parenting time? Because it's a clearly different situation. There's no reason. Um, I think at the current time, every other weekend would be appropriate with he could do one alter or um, one overnight during um, off weeks. Okay. Um, and that sounds pretty reasonable at this point. Um, Friday to Sunday, whatever that, you know, six o'clock till six o'clock Friday until six o'clock Sunday. Does that work? Yes. Sir? No. What doesn't work about it? I would like every weekend because I'm back in time. I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to order that. Okay. I want as much time as possible, but I do not. I understand, but I, there are also certain things that you have to go through that you just are saying, I want more time, but that isn't the way this works. There has I to apologize. be legal standards that are met, okay? I, I apologize, and I'm trying to do those legal standards. So whatever you want to order for now, I'll accept because I, I'm not getting any time. And then right. if I have to follow other proceedings to get whatever else is needed, I will do so, sir. Friday from six o'clock. Does that work? Good time for you, ma'am? Yes, sir. Friday at six to Sunday at six. Um, and if he, he's not going to start that till next weekend, unless you want him to start it this weekend, but you haven't had any time to prepare for anything. So I will, if you would, do you want it to start this weekend or next weekend, ma'am? Next weekend will be fine. If I could interject. Yes. When I originally came back, um, I came back in like October. We were getting every weekend. And basically, because I asked for more time, um, that's when this whole proceeding started. She told me she wanted me to go file for custody. So that's why I'm filing. So if it could be for the judge, uh, if you could allow it, I'm actually ready for him this weekend. I haven't seen him since January 8th, since all of this has kind of gone down. So I personally would love to see my son this weekend because I haven't been spending any time with him. It will be every other weekend, Friday at 6 till Sunday at 6. It will start next weekend. You will also have, you, you've said, ma'am, the off week. 
Um, I don't know what the off week is because if he has this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, is that the off week or is next week? Because then that's the one I'm going to uh, normal parenting. As far as I'm concerned, he would have every Wednesday night overnight. From six. I could agree to what everyone say. Um, from six o'clock and then he'll take him to school on Thursday morning. Okay. Is that any problem? Nope. Wait a minute. Wednesday, what time does your son get out of school? He gets out of school at 2.30. All right. Well, then we're going to start it. Wednesday, he can have him. Uh, sir, do you, are you working or anything? Yes, sir. What time can you pick him up? 2.30, right after school. Well, he would need to go home first and get his belongings. So. I'll, let him, I'll, I'll let you start at 4. Now, I gave you 6. I'm going to back it up to 4. Wednesday Thank at you. 4. Uh, until Thursday at school, all right, where you will be responsible to get them to school. You better get them to school on time and work with them for homework and all that kind of stuff. That's just, that's part of being a parent. So it'll be every Wednesday from. May, may I interject again? What? So I'm actually filing this motion so I can have 50 50 with my child. Um, I, understand I understand how it looks. Going to get it. Yes, I understand that. My question is. What are the proceedings for me? That was going to be my question. How can I obtain that now that I am back and I'm here? You have to meet Vidvarka and you don't have any Vidvarka. What, 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 where would I receive that information? I can't give you advice. I can't give you legal advice because that's like saying, here, you do this, mom. Then I tell her, here's what you do to, to defeat what he wants to do. Okay. I'm not there. Go to an attorney. I understand, sir. I'm not trying to come off any type of way. I'm simply asking a question. So if I want more time, can I try to schedule a mediation with you right now? Yeah, I'm not. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not a mediator. I'm asking with this current parenting time order that we're setting up, would I be able to have a mediation to receive more time? Um, you can do whatever you want. You go to an attorney and figure it out. But uh, this is the time you've got now. All right. Um, we'll, we'll get that order out Wednesday, 4 p.m. to Thursday morning at school if he's no if he's not at school it'll be like nine o'clock in the morning is your return you understand that yes wednesdays if he's not in school return him by 9 a.m yes otherwise and and it'll be next friday it will be this wednesday at four o'clock is the first Co thing to start correct next and then you will have every other week thank you very much good luck thank you, thank you. i have one more question but um, how should we exercise the um, picking up? Should Brandon pick him up for me or I drop him off? Or... We, what, what we should do, first of all, on Thursdays, he's going to drop him off at school, okay? Yeah, for Wednesday to that, pick up. Other than that, the party who is getting the child will be responsible to pick up the child, okay? Okay, So when Thank he you. gets him on Friday night, he's going to pick him up from your place. When you get the child back on Sunday, you'll pick him up from his place. Wednesday, he'll pick him up from yours. Thursday, he'll drop him off at school. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. So, Your Honor, what? I'm picking him up from school on on Thursdays. I assume because you're not picking him up from school on Thursdays. You're picking him up on Wednesday from Mom's house at four o'clock. Right. So the way that it was before in the past, Mom's usually at work. I would have to go through a grandparent. I'm just trying to get it understood. I don't work that on Wednesdays. She doesn't work on Wednesdays. Okay. So me or my mother will be picking him up from her house on Wednesdays, four p.m. Got it. Good luck, everyone. Thank you. Thank we'll you. Send you the order. Thank you. Parents, can you hear me? You got to pull over. I'm not going to hear your motion while you're driving. All right. And you have to unmute. We can start a little bit here, but are you are you at a spot where you can pull over, sir? sir? Hutchinson versus Ferentz. This is a motion that has been filed by Ms. Coletti on behalf of the mother to split the proceeds from the sale of the marital home. There's already an order out there that requires you, Ms. Coletti, to hold the money that's been closed in your IOTA account. Is that correct? Correct. And you're asking that it be distributed? No, I'm asking that this be set off an evidentiary hearing with regard to the distribution. Mr. Right. Ference, increase I, uh, the... Oh. And that's about all I can do, quite frankly, is set some kind of evidentiary hearing because I understand that Mr. Ference incurred some more expenses on the line of credit and uh, it's your thought that he's not entitled to do that and that'll all be his. It's my understanding that he believes that the money that he extended on the line of credit would all be, it was put into the house to make it more sellable, saleable, whatever the thing is, and increase the value. I, of course, have no idea one way or another. 
uh, what it was done. If it was put in, and then it would be reasonable that the parties split the proceeds after that is uh, paid. If it was not put into the house or if it was, in other words, if he put in another $20,000 and it didn't do anything to help the house, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. But um, I believe, Council, um, you've, you've indicated that he put in to increase the value and, and make it more saleable. And so uh, Partially, yes, partially correct, Your Honor. I just wanted to add that also for marital debts too. However, I ask, and I do understand that there would be an evidentiary hearing needed to determine if that, that's uh, legitimate or not. However, what we do ask for is that the January 4th order be aside, be set aside the ex parte order to hold the funds um, and then have the funds distributed and then, all, and then hold a hearing. So, and the reason for that, Your Honor, is because the judgment of divorce is um, as sister counsel stated in paragraph five of her motion, that this is a written agreement by the parties and controls. And it specifically states that the profits should be split between the parties. Um, and that is in its own. And we have the profits and they should be split. Anything um, else regarding the uh, payments and reimbursement. And I do agree with sister counsel. There are issues for reimbursement and whatnot and for the payment of um, certain debts. However, those are a separate issue that can still be done and should be done. On a, uh, separately rather than holding my client's share of the proceeds because what happened is is that my client relied on the net on the on the profits or to receive them when he wanted to close on a home that he is currently not able to close on because he does not have the funds to do so and this is something that's irreparable harm to my client if we hold the money for the sake of, of the profits uh for the sake of determining that so i asked for that your honor i think that it could still uh, plaintiff's remedy and plaintiff's share is not going to be harmed. It's not going anywhere. She still has the right, despite. Uh, well, it will, because once I give it to him, he's going to put it into his house and then he's going to require months to pay it back. The court order that Judge Hillary signed said the parties appear on a to be announced for an evidentiary hearing with regard to division of the equity of the sale of home um, and responsibility for payments on the line of credit. The two of you, uh, Miss Coletti and uh, Miss Diab, you can you can negotiate maybe a certain amount that can be let out because you know X number of dollars is clearly going to go and I'm just going to hold a certain amount that's in dispute. You can do that, but I'm going to set up an evidentiary hearing. It's not going to be a long one because I don't really think it should be a long one. Um, and so we'll get it as quick as we can. However, Ms. Coletti, you've also asked for uh, time for some discovery, which is, a, which is appropriate. How much time do we need? Because the documentation has to be obtain from Mr. Ferentz and stuff like that regarding. Correct. Yeah. And when, before he hired Ms. Diab, he said he was going to send me the proof that all the, um, the line of credit was used for the house. And that's really what I need to get from him. I need proof of what was spent to on the house and whether the line of credit was used for something else. And then we also have other issues about whether Ms. Hutchinson approved it or what the agreement was to sell the house as is. So those are all that's issues. I'm probably going to end up deciding uh, whether she did or not. And I'm kind of giving you some guidance when I say, if it was used on the house and it was used probably to increase the value or make it easily saleable, it's probably going to be a responsibility of both parties. I know you. I know what your argument is, Ms. Coletti, and I know what other. I'm just giving you some idea of it right now, so maybe you guys can actually work this thing out. But Ms. Diab, when are you going to get the information to Ms. Coletti? Because otherwise, I'm going to give her 30 days for discovery or something. <laughs> Your Honor, I already sent it. I resent it again. And Ms. Coletti, I apologize if you didn't get it. I sent out all of the uh, documents that my client sent me for every ledger of the line of credit, every um, every transaction that has was used since. Um, okay. The, I've, the not, I've not received it. So if you would send it yes. again, I'd be happy to look at it. Yeah, I will give you 30 days for discovery, both parties. All right. Um, we'll set up something. It's not going to be a long one. And quite frankly, I'm hopeful that the two of you can get the documentation together at least. And we'll set up an evidentiary hearing of no more than two hours. Um, and I will also meet with you probably a week or so beforehand to look over stuff and tell you probably what I'm going to do. Um, okay. I just want to get this done. Okay. The money's there. And if he legitimately spent it on the house, it does say to split 50% of the proceeds. If he didn't, then uh, I can tell you what's going to happen to that. And I think Ms. Diab, you know also what I'm going to do on that. If he didn't. Absolutely, Your Honor. And I just wanted to add. And if it didn't so benefit that it was for marital debts as well. So there were two things that my client's position is and that I will that that will show Very that much. it was used for the home and to pay marital debts that uh, that that were incurred. So that's the things but that we will but be if providing. That, if that's I'm just warning if that was the marital debt that's listed in there and he was using that money to pay it off, 
That's he, that was his responsibility to begin with. But we'll we'll get to that. We'll set up an evidentiary hearing. Thirty days uh, is allowed for discovery. All right. Good luck, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Have Thank a good you. weekend. Thank you. EM Gates v. Gates both are present via Zoom. This was plaintiff mother's motion regarding custody. There was a default judgment. The uh, force was entered. 1031-22, gave joint legal and physical custody, parenting time as the parties agreed. Fathers moved away from the Grand Rapids area down to Marshall. Um, and basically, mom's asking for a, uh, a request for uh, custody. The As far as parenting time goes, maybe I should refer that to the friend of the court. As far as custody goes, the order says uh, judgment says either party may petition the court for parenting time when no longer living together. This is really what you're looking for is parenting time, ma'am. Yes. And to be set, sir, um, what's your idea of what parenting time should be? Uh, I, in all honesty, I actually went through, um, I have a calendar and I went through the rest of the 2024 school year and the uh, beginning of the 20, excuse me, the 23 school year and the next school year. And I went through and I, um, we've always done, I would get him on the weekends and then she would have him during school, obviously, because she's right there by the school. Um, but if there was an email address I could send over, I have pictures of them already ready in a draft to be able to do so to send to both of you guys, but it would break it down throughout the school year to where, um, during the week he would be there with her. And then on the weekends I would get him. Well, it's not always uh, fair to, that you get every weekend because then she never gets any fun time with the kid. As far as she she sends him to school and brings him home, and then you get all the fun time on the weekends. Right, I understand that. Um, but as in she was requested in the paperwork and motion was to get one of the weekends out of it every month. Um, but that's that's fine. I was more worried and uh, focusing more into the whole process of the summers and being able to do the switch. Um, if he's not going to school and he's on summer break, I would like to be able to pick him and have him through the week and then switch it to the weekends for her until the school time would come again. And then as the holidays come up, there would be a division between the two of them, obviously. Um, well, if the, put it this way. If the two of you can agree on anything, you can make a stipulated order and send it in. And I'm sure I'm not going to interfere with you, but if not, and it doesn't sound like there really is um, an agreement at this time, I'm going to refer it to the friend of the court for them to do a parenting time uh, recommendation. Um, the only thing that I, it costs $150 from each party to go there. You have the funds to pay for that, for the friend of the court to do an examination? Not uh, currently. Yeah, not currently at the exact moment. All right, then I'll waive the fees. All right. I'll waive the fees, but you're going to have to cooperate with the friend of the court. When they contact you, you need to, you need to cooperate with them. All right. Otherwise they're only going to get one side of the story. Absolutely. Understood. Okay. Um, we'll send it to the friend of the court for parenting time. And as I say, I'll waive your fees. For Thank you. you. Right. Work with them on that. And uh, if they will make a recommendation, if they make a recommendation and you don't like it, you need to object to it because otherwise uh, it'll become an order. All right. Okay. Understood. Okay, ma'am. You understand that? Yes. All right. We'll send it to the friend of the court and let's hope we can work something out for you. Good luck. All right. Thank you. For Thank, you. Number Thank you. Thank you. Number nine, I, I looked over and saw Number nine, number nine. Famous Beatles album song to any of those out there who are familiar with the Beatles. Number nine. Well, it's not much of a song, but I think it was on the White Album. Audio or anything? Driving and everything. Uh, Miss Gray One? Elena? Uh, yes. Can you hear yes. me? All right. You have video. Yes, I can hear you. Oh, uh, yes. All right. Um, this is the matter of Gray One versus Buckwing. It's a motion that's been made. Mr. Buckwing was on it early on this earlier, but has checked out, and I have not. We haven't been able to get him back. So this matter was originally scheduled for like eight thirty. Like I say, he checked in and he checked out. Uh, this is your motion. Um, you say you have some, it's a custody motion in which basically you're saying he should have custody, as I understand it, because quite frankly, you say you have medical issues that make it impossible for you to care for the child. You've also moved to Oklahoma. Is that is that correct? Uh, yes. And so you want to give dad full custody? Yes. Um, you also mentioned terminating your rights, but I cannot do that and will not do that here. All right. Okay. Um, uh, does Do you know whether or not Mr. Buckwing objects to getting full custody? Oh, uh, he agrees. 
All right. Then uh, what I will do is we'll enter a custody order that gives him full physical and legal custody by agreement of the parties. All right. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. We're adjourned. Thank you. Four, five, two, it's Bennett v. Bennett. Up. This is uh, both parties are present on Zoom. Um, this is a request from mother for a ROPA hearing, if you will. However, ma'am, you said the child's not born yet. Is that correct? She's not. Can't do anything on that until there's a live birth. Okay, so that's not what they told me here. They well, told it doesn't matter. I'm telling you, and, and, and I'm telling you that I cannot do anything until there's a live birth. When is the birth due? I scheduled C section. Pardon me, I, just, up. I have a scheduled C section February 26th. All right. After the child is born, uh, you can come back and we can uh, do a DNA test if you want. Okay. So here's my other question. They had, I obviously you're not the judge, um, but they had to let you know because um, I'm in the process of our divorce. Yep. And so they said to let you know because they have me filed under children are you know divorced with minor children. Yeah, DM case, and if and if it's determined that uh, Mr. Bennett is not the child's uh, father. Um, then we'll change it to a DO case and you'll be over a lot quicker. Well, that, well, that's the thing is um, I have other children that are involved in this case, but I don't have custody of them and have not for a long time. So one of, one of these ladies here told me to bring it to your attention to see if we could have it just uh, the divorce without minor children. Do you have other children with Mr. Bennett? I have no children with Mr. Bennett. I cannot change it to a DO case until I know that uh, the child that you are carrying is not Mr. Bennett's. And that'll well, be done. After you have a live birth, we will order um, DNA from Mr. Bennett and the child. Once that comes back and shows that he's not, we can probably change it to a DO case. That's just the way it's got to go. And I can't do anything until there is a birth of the child. Okay. So that's what they told me this hearing for is if he here and willing to tell you that we have been together for a very long time. I understand, but I got to follow the law that it states for me. You got to have the child born first. I can't do a DNA on it. Mr. Bennett, I'm assuming you say that child's not yours? Correct. Right. Um, I got to have a the child born before I can find that the child's not. All right. So he's automatically going to go on the birth certificate? Renotice this after the child is born, and we'll take care of it then. Okay. All right. Good luck, everyone. I'll look for a renotice. Good luck. Thank you. 5DS. Um, Ms. Gustin is the plaintiff. Mr. Burton is the defendant. He's been trying to get on. He apparently has texted several people saying he's trying to get on. Um, there's a request by mom for full custody. She says she does everything for the kids. Dad's verbally abusive to mom. Um, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about, the youngest child, because there's no, no showing that the child, the youngest child, is even his. I mean, I don't know what you're talking about on that one because there's a young child and you say he doesn't pay attention, but is there other is there another judgment somewhere that makes him the father of that child? Um, he is the father. I don't I don't think he did a DNA test for either one of them, but he signed the birth certificates. Doesn't matter if he signs the birth certificate. Did he sign an affidavit of parentage? I don't think so, no then he's not the legal father until that's done. Because you, you guys aren't married, are you? No, we are not. All right, well, regardless of whether the dad's on or not, because it doesn't really matter at this point, the judgment of support says that the mother has initial custody and either parent may seek a custody order from that. Um, and I do have that, I mean, that says that the father is uh, the father of Nevaeh. Yes. So um, I, I have nothing else that I can do except set up an evidentiary hearing for custody because you've requested a custody hearing and the support order says very much that either parent may uh, seek custody uh, from the courts. And so I'm going to have to set up, uh, set up an evidentiary hearing on that. Although I guess what I would like to do is um, before I have the hearing, I'm going to refer it to the friend of the court for custody, parenting time and support for their type of recommendation as to what is appropriate um i'll waive the fees of both parties so that you can go there make sure that when the friend of the court contacts you that you cooperate with them um, yeah mr burton is going to be told the same thing i would not normally proceed with this knowing that he's trying to get on except it doesn't no matter what he says i have to have an evidentiary hearing so it doesn't matter whether he wants it or not i have to and in order to make a better decision i'm going to refer it to the friend of the court as i say for 
uh, physical, legal, custody, parenting time, and child support with the fees waived. All right? Okay. Yes. Put the contact from the friend of the court, and you got to do something about your youngest child because he's not okay. the legal father of that child. Okay. All right. Thank you. We're yes, adjourned. thank you. Ma'am, if you will put yourself on mute for a minute, we're going to try and wait till Mr. Redmond gets in and I'm going to take another case, but we'll, as soon as I'm done with that, we'll come right to you. Okay. So just, yes. just put it on mute and let's see if we can keep this moving. Do you need right. to put on your video and you need to put a, take off your mute. We know. Yes, I can. Sorry about that. Did you send the notice of this motion to Kelly? Yes, your honor. You know, when? While uh, then oh. it on the 10th of January. All right. Do you know if she got it? I mean, have you talked to her at all? I did not talk to her, but she has received it, and she wrote a response letter that's been sent to me and to you as well. Well, I don't have a response, but I'll call the case. How do I pronounce your name, sir? Begaley. Okay, Miss. this is Begaley versus Begaley. Mr. Begaley on uh, Zoom here. Um, I've just asked him if he served the mother. He did, and he said uh, Miss Begaley has filed a response, although I don't. When did you get her response? I received it on the 17th. All right. Um, can you tell me what she says? The response, the letter reads, it says, to whom it may concern, and it shows the court case up top. On January 13th, 2024, I was notified via mail that my ex-husband, James Begaley, filed the following motion with the court. Number one, change custody of our son, David Begaley, from me to him. Number two, discontinued child support payments made to me because David will be residing full-time with his father, me. I accept both char both changes, is what she said. All right. Well, and your son is here from Calumet, right? Yes, he's staying with a friend until we get this all sorted out. He's been down here for about three months now. Yeah, and is he going to come live with you or continue to live with a friend? No, he's going to live with me. All right. Well, under the circumstances, in order to change custody... Um, there's clearly a proper cause or change of circumstance to change, to have an evidentiary hearing. The problem that I run into is I'm mandated to have an evidentiary hearing to change custody. Uh, however, this child's already over 17 years old, 17 and a couple of months old. By the time I have a hearing and everything, he'd be 17 and a half. I mean, I only have jurisdiction over him until he's 18. Uh, right. So, and mother's agreement that says that she, and I, and I will, uh, Actually, raise your right hand for me for a minute. Would you please do you solemnly swear from testimony given this case to be the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, thank you. We were on Zoom here, and it's all recorded. You just read me a letter from Mother. You believe it's from her that agrees to allow you to have custody of your son? Yes, it shows her signature, and she does wrote down and says, in regards to a possible request James makes in the future for me to pay him child support, I make roughly a third of what he does annually. His wife also works and has a third of a duplex they own. Please consider waiving the hearing upon receipt of this notice. I am self-employed and work Friday, January 26th. Attending the hearing would cause me to lose money. I can't earn back. A copy has mailed via USPS to a friend of the court and James Begaley. I was mailed it to the friend of the court, which isn't the court, which was her problem. Okay. Well, I talked to Julie. Okay. Right. Talk I understand there is a copy that's somewhere in the courthouse somewhere and we'll uh, agree to it. Um, I'm going to do the unusual thing in that I never do this. I'm going to, based on the agreement of the parties, um, change physical custody of your son, David, to you. All right. Thank with, you very much. with parenting time for mother as agreed between the parties, because it's going to be agreed between you and your son and all that kind of stuff. All right. So we'll change that um, to you. Um, I will at this point suspend child support payments promptly. All right. As of today. Uh, it may take a little bit of time till it gets, uh, is, if it's being withheld from your check, it may take a few weeks till we can stop it, okay? Is that um, filed paperwork and then you'll send a copy to my employer to show officially stop it? Yeah, what, what happens is we we issue this order to stop it. It goes, the friend of the court then has to contact the withholding firm and they contact your, and gotcha. you can, I'm, I will issue an order that, Hopefully by early next week, you'll get a copy of, and if you can take it in and, and they'll, they'll deal with that, that's fine at work. Okay. Perfect. But we'll do the best we can. You may still have to pay child support for a few weeks that you're actually entitled to get back. That'll be a question 
You might right. want to contact her and say that I've suspended it. So any more money she gets, she might have to pay back. Okay. Uh, but that's probably the least of your worries. Uh, yeah. Not, worry right now is your, I will give you uh, custody and um, based okay. on the agreement of uh, the party's custody, uh, physical custody, legal custody will remain the same and parenting time as agreed. All right. Okay. Another question. Um, excuse me. Uh, for my wife's insurance to put him on our insurance, they need documentation for insurance on the paperwork. Is that just something that they could use as well as to put him on our insurance? I don't know what you mean. They need documentation. You're going to have custody of them. Okay. Then that would be probably what they're looking to, looking yeah. for. That's what I would think so. Okay. All right. We'll Thank you, very you won't get this till at least next week because we got to draft it and get it out to you. All okay. Right? Take your time. We have a good address for you, right? Yeah, 108 West. No, nope, that's all right. Don't say it. We're on YouTube. Oh, okay. All right. Good luck. Thank yep, you. Thank Bye. Thank you. Bye. All right. It's likely he just doesn't connect here. Um, is there another one we can do quickly before? We're still trying to get him to connect. We send him all kinds of messages. He's not connecting. I'm going to keep you on the screen for a minute because if he doesn't connect, I'm eventually going to just go ahead. But if you can just wait there for me for a few minutes, okay? Yes, you sir. have a way of connecting to him? Can you text him or something and say? I tried texting him this morning and didn't get a response, but he hasn't been responding to me since we haven't been agreeing on some of the things that have been going on. All right. Let's, we'll keep trying for a few minutes here. If so, you got to unmute and tell me that. Yes, I can hear you. Did you have a video? There you are. Okay. Yes, Your uh, Honor. Did you serve not notice of this on uh, Mr. Maldonado? Yes, I did. All right. You sent it to him by mail? Yes. They told me to make a copy for him as well to send it in the mail for him. And so you sent it to him when? Um, I don't remember the exact date, but I did go to the office and grab the copies and the, the day that I grabbed these copies, I ordered it in the mail. So like the seventh of the seventh of December. Oh, all right. That's plenty of time. All right. Small this is Santiago versus Small Night of Santiago. Are you married to him? We are still legally married, but we've been separated since my daughter's been one years old. I've never had right. any contact with him. Well, you're asking for a DNA to you were married to to this uh to Mr. Uh, Maldonado at the time your child was born. Yes, and I've asked for our divorce. I've actually filed for that as well. Well, but that, I don't know. When did you file for that? Um, Here in Kent County? Yes, I did. I went to the legal aid assistance, and they helped me uh, file for this uh, September 1st. We've right. previously had uh, a court order for him to have a DNA test with me. but I, I don't know why, because you would have been married to him, and we wouldn't normally do that. Yeah, he requested it uh, and for court, and the, the location that he had it was too far for me to travel, and I had been in a car accident, and I couldn't reach it. And because of that reason, they left everything the way it was and made him pay child support. Well, because he we were the father. Yeah, because we were legally married, yes, but he's not the biological father. He was in a different state. Well, then you should, um, this case should actually be filed in your divorce case. Uh, I put that in my divorce, actually, on your honor as well. Well, the the case number what I'll have to find your case number or something like that because you're now claiming that he is not the father, and in your divorce case, I will order a DNA test to determine if he is the the father or not. He still is the legal father right now until we get a DNA test, and I will send out an order for a DNA testing for him to divorce case with Judge Gottlieb. The divorce case is with Judge Gottlieb, so I'll have to work with Judge Gottlieb to figure this out. Okay. Uh, and see what see what we do because if you're saying he's not because up until now you're married and he is the legal father we'll work mm -hmm. with judge Gottlieb and see what has to be done on that matter order a dna test unless judge God, Gottlieb does not want it and um, send it out so that he has to uh, abide by it to the best of your knowledge he lives on, in um looks like on hyde park in maryland yes all right let's see what we can do all right i'll order dna testing but you'll get uh, oh, some information okay. from Judge Gottlieb because she okay. has the divorce. Let him read. So that's what you're really dealing with now. In, in court. Yes. All right. I'm dealing with the divorce and the DNA test, and that's it. You're you're dealing in the divorce case now, not in this case. Not okay. in the DS case. So we'll see what we'll see what we can do. All right. Good luck to you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Mr. Thank Redman you. is now uh, okay. YouTube <clears throat> here with us. All right. Yes, Your Honor, I am.
Mr. Redmond, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. All right, this is a matter of Likely versus Redmond. Both parties are present by his own and filed by uh, Mr. Redmond. Um, he says to go back and reread his stuff that he filed back in May of last year. Um, about it, he says that uh, he wants a change of custody because at that time says the child's getting bad grades, which he now admits the in the motion says they're better now. Says mom has changed her school, which she has the right to change her school. Uh, the child is on his lease, uh, says the mom, as verbally and physically disciplines the child, unless it's abusive, that doesn't matter, and says mom does not have a stable environment. Um, mother has sole legal and physical custody uh, in order from 2015. Um, sir, what? Uh, in order for you to try and change custody, you have to meet the burden of but Varka, which means there has to be a change of cust uh, change of circumstance or proper cause. There's nothing in here that's been pled that would indicate that. What have you got to say as far as proper cause or change of circumstance? Well, um, I mean, to elaborate on what you said, like, I mean, um, I I really need to um, put emphasis on her school, and um, I feel like um, she needs a chance. She needs a, ch a chance to even go to school. Like, she hasn't been going to school. I got records. Um, right here, stacks of records I had to go um, find because, you know, I don't, just like you said, I don't have custody of her, but I did my due diligence and found all of her records that she has. She has not been going to school. She, from, uh, from what, 2020, this is way back in, um, in your motion, you said she was getting bad grades, but she's doing better now. So she's doing better since I've been in, um, I, since I got back in touch with mom and that's just this year, but she still, I, they still, uh, uh, said one called me and talking about truancy. Um, and, um, I feel like that is a, a form of neglect. Ma'am, is a child attending school? Yes, your honor. She is every day. She has days where she misses partial <clears throat> days because heaven has a bunch of health issues. She is type two diabetic with high blood pressure. She also has polycystic ovary syndrome. And we just, I just recently found out that she's having some issues with her heart, which we are addressing. Um, we actually have a couple of appointments coming up, but Heaven goes to school on a regular basis. Her teachers will even vouch for that. She's a good student. She tries <laughs> and puts all her effort into her work and her grades. She does struggle a little bit, but that's because she's ADD and ADHD. Um, and then she's dealing with a lot of depression because with the PCOS, there's, you know, hair that grows on her face, her neck, her chest and her chin, you know, she gets picked on by other kids and bullied about that. So, you know, she has, she does have her rough moments where she's slacking on her grades, but heaven does her best to make sure that she picks up what she can and fixes her <clears> grades <throat> to the best of her ability on her own. And me and her teachers, we do discuss that frequently. Any unexcused absences can be shown in her doctor's appointments. All heaven right. does not miss school unless she has an appointment to go to, or right. she's not feeling well. All right. Mr. Redmond, that's kind of a valid excuse. That's not that's not that's not entirely true. Um, uh, Cabernet is a very smart, intellectual person, and um, she is very amazing at painting pictures. And I'm not saying that um, a, a negative in a, a negative light at all with um, Cabernet. It's a beautiful thing. But um, just like I said, if you didn't hear me, I've been telling you it's it's start even this school threatened truancy. And I, I have records of this. It hold the whole first two, three weeks, probably a month or two, she did not attend school. And they said they will comply with me in the courts because I just like I said, I do not have custody of, of heaven. But in, in, in prior engagements, I have proof that I have we've been to court and I and she and I was awarded a joint physical uh this is joint custody. This is back in um, February of twenty February twenty eighth, twenty eighteen. But and in, in, in you don't have this paperwork for some reason. And I got another paper right here that says I have joint physical custody, and this is dated back in August 20, 2021. This date and it is uh, notarized. I mean, it's notarized. So so what? It's not a court order. But we did agree to have 50-50 custody, me and the plaintiff. The only, the only legal documents that I have in the 
court file says that she has sole legal and physical custody. That's the that's what's in the court order. And and I'm just saying that this is a uh, legal information that we find. What's the, what's the date on that? I, I just told you it's 2018. It's February 28, 2018. All right. So I mean, I'm looking for it. I don't see it, but so my point is. If it is a problem taking heaven to school, I need physical custody. And if it is a problem and, and uh, the plaintiff needs help, I am her father and I will take her to school. But I need the courts to acknowledge that heaven needs help and I am her father and I am here to help her. That's fine, but you don't meet the Varka <clears throat> for a change of custody. And uh, Cabernet just agreed to me. Um, I don't, you know. Hey, look, Cabernet just agreed to me yesterday. We had a conversation and she said that every every other week she's agreeing with every other week. I can get heaven and take her to her appointments every other week. And now we're saying I'm saying, OK, that's physical. Uh, that's more parenting time. That's all I'm asking for is more parenting time and physical custody. So I can check on these appointments, go to these appointments, go to her school. I volunteer at her schools. That's how I know she's missing school. All right. I've said this before that your motion does not provide the VARCA information to change custody. I don't know. The only stuff that I have in the court file is her having sole legal and physical custody. If the two of you wish to come up with some agreement where mom is willing to um, change something about this and the two of you can agree to it, you can file it in a stipulated order that the court will review and most likely sign. But at this point, you do not have the proper cause or change of circumstance for change of custody. Ma'am, you can work with him on whatever it is that you want as far as having him help you out, getting him to school, getting the child to school. If you, in fact, do agree to some of this, I suggest that you write it down and you make it in a stipulation in order, and I will sign it so that he will have his uh, guaranteed ability to do that. Do you understand that, ma'am? Yes, sir, Your Honor, but I do have something to say. What? Mr. Redmond is in and out of heaven's life. He only comes around. It's all right. That doesn't matter. I've just made my ruling that there's not enough to change the custody. It doesn't make any difference at this point. Thank Whatever you, Your Honor. Saying. So um, that, that's the order you can stipulate. I suggest you work with him. If he can help you out getting the child to school, let him help you. Good luck. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Habor versus Church. There's a motion filed by mother. Did you Did you give him notice of this motion? Yeah, and I actually talked to him about it on Wednesday. I reminded him of court today. Yeah. What did he say? He said, okay, I will turn on Zoom when I get in my car for work. Well, we haven't seen him on Zoom at all. This is your motion. Or it says, I'm requesting documentation regarding a motion filed in October pertaining to Olivia Church being born. On. What, what do you, I don't know what your motion is. What do you want? Um. Well, we did when we... When I came to you last time, you um, had me get the DNA test done. Yeah. So I did that and I returned it to the courts. And then um, when I called the courts, they said that I had to file this paperwork with you to get the paperwork to send to get her birth certificate. You have to. There, there's been no finding yet that he's not the father. You have to file a motion that he's not the father now that there's a DNA test. You understand that? Uh, yeah. All right. So. Once you do that, and if I determine that he's not the father, I mean, I have a DNA testing here. What What are you asking for? We were just um, we were trying to um have it established that Justin Jones was the father of Olivia. That's why we did the DNA test with Justin Jones. Yeah, but uh, you should be filing a motion to make sure that Mister Hybor is not the father first. Oh, what you just want me to? You want the court to send you copies of the DNA testing? No, um, the I guess the state of Michigan just said that we need to have a, like a, a motion from the court just stating that they got the DNA test stating that Bill's not the father. It's not a motion from the court. You got to file the motion. You got to file a motion asking the court to say that uh, Mr. Hybor is not the father. Oh, OK. I thought that's what I just did. OK, I'm no, you sorry. Just ask for, you just asked for documentation. So I'll wait for your motion to come in and I'm sure we'll take care of it at that time. OK. All right. Thank you so much. You. Okay. Bye. Bye. My name is V. Tran. Both parties are present via Zoom. This is a motion filed by the father regarding Brooklyn, um, who is 13. He wants uh, custody. He says the mother attacked the child. He, in fact, took the child to the police who filed a report to, I believe it was DeVos Hospital, where they treated the child and to CPS. The only custody order that I have is a DS order from 
2011. It gives mother initial custody. Um, that pretty much states what your motion says, sir. Yes? Yes, yes. All right, ma'am, what's your response? Um, I'm not trying to um, turn over my rights to him. Like, if Brooklyn wants to stay with Tom, that's um, perfectly fine. But I want to keep my rights. Well, what do you mean your rights? I'm not going to terminate your rights. Yeah, but that's what Tom is really trying to do. Well, he, he can't do it. Okay. okay. Only, only the state of Michigan and, and CPS and that kind of stuff could ask the court to terminate. You're not going to have your rights terminated. Okay. No. Okay. So you agree to what allow Brooklyn dad to have custody and Brooklyn to live with him, and you uh, what uh, have parenting time as the two of you agree? Um, I don't want him to have custody of her. Like she can just stay with him. That's where she wants to be. She wants to be with her father. Well, um, why don't the two of you that agree on all of this write something up, a stipulation, and send it to the court that Brooklyn shall remain with father? Your Your Honor, this is um, this is what I filed for motion for. This is the second time she has a child abuse charge against her. She has an active warrant. My daughter is not safe in her care, and that's why I'm actively seeking custody of my daughter. And all right, I can set up an evidentiary hearing for that. I can't change custody on a Friday morning. There is clearly a proper cause or change of circumstances to have such a hearing, um, especially if mother has a warrant out there. Is it regarding child abuse that the yes. warrant? Yes. Right. Um, ex parte was granted. So what? That I filed ex parte as well. So well, I will set up an evidentiary hearing regarding custody because I believe there is proper cause or change of circumstance. You'll both get notice as to where and when to appear regarding custody. If you can agree on something and figure it out in the meantime, that's fine. Otherwise, uh, at this point, <clears throat> ma'am, if you have a warrant out there for it, I'm going to allow the child to I, remain. remain um, I do not. I already have taken care of that already with an attorney. With an attorney? I mean, are you charged with that then? Um, It's actually, they, it was for domestic assault. It's not child abuse. All right, but uh, domestic assault on who? They, um, Brooklyn, but Tom doesn't know the whole story. So, okay, but wait a minute. If you have that, I mean, is the case pending? Do you have an attorney that's representing you? Yes, I do for um the, the criminal charge. All right. So um, I'm going to um, allow the daughter to remain with father um, until the evidentiary hearing. And then we'll figure out what happens. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. Sir, that takes care of it. We'll have you here for an evidentiary hearing when it's set. I can't do anything else but that. Okay. All right. The child will remain with you until we, until the evidentiary hearing. Okay. Good luck, everybody. Thank you. All right. Um, it's Thank you. entitled Schmucker v. Schmucker. Both parties are present via Zoom. Mr. Schmucker with his yep. uh, attorney, um, Ms. Sheltron. Um, this was a motion filed by the mother regarding custody. Um says, you know, dad hasn't exercised custody or parenting time with kids for a long time. Um, actually, the answer from uh, counsel says that you already have custody. Ma'am, you already have um, I I have full legal custody, and then we share physical custody. Well, as far as you, what do you mean you share physical custody? He's got, he's got parenting time that he doesn't exercise. Um, well, yeah, he's supposed to see him every Wednesday and every other weekend. And I, I guess my, my question was, I'd like it, get it changed that it doesn't say that since he's not exercising. So you want to eliminate all his parenting time? Yeah. I mean, he's not exercising it. So yeah. All right. Um, and his response counsel, he says he wants to, um, start pursuing his parenting time. Yes, Your Honor. And um, there have been issues here with um, parent alienation, mom with the girls. And that is a big factor as to why the parenting time is not taking place. Um, dad would like to enlist the services of the parenting time coordinator to get things back on track. Well, let me tell you, I don't uh, order parenting time coordinators unless both parties want it. And I doubt Miss. Uh, Schmucker wants it because it does not. It's like sending somebody to counseling who doesn't want to go to counseling. Um, if the parenting time coordinator doesn't uh, isn't agreed, ma'am, do you want to send it to a parenting time coordinator? No. All right, I'm not going to order that. Um, I'm also not going to change anything in the order. But uh, counsel, if he's not getting his parenting time and he wants it, he should be filing with the friend of the court for every time he misses it, uh, unless 
unless he's voluntarily missing it. And then there is nothing to do. If he's just not showing up, um, he's not showing up. If she's prohibiting him from it, file with the friend of the court and uh, they'll, they'll look into it. And if the friend of the court deems it appropriate, um, it'll end up in front of me. But, um, you know, him, him asking for help in a response is not appropriate because um, she didn't, it, it's like he's filing a motion to get his parenting time and um, that notice is late to mom. So all I'm going to tell you right now is, ma'am, you're one that changes parenting time. I'm not going to eliminate his parenting time at this point. Um, if you want to have a whole evidentiary hearing to determine that his parenting time goes away, I'll set up a parenting time hearing somewhere down the road. It'll be a few months out there. Um, but until then, the parenting time is going to remain in effect. Uh, by you filing this motion, you apparently woke him up and now he wants parenting time. Um, so if you want a parenting time motion, I'll have a parenting time motion to, to change his parenting time. Is that what you want? Yeah, I do, please, Your Honor. And in the meantime, I'm not going to change any parenting time. And if he didn't, if he's denied parenting time, file with friend of the court. I don't enforce it to begin with. I, I require it to go through the friend of the court. So we'll set up an evidentiary hearing regarding parenting time and see what, see what we do. Seems kind of crazy when Brooklyn's already 16 and stuff like that, but we'll figure it out. I, I mean, I'm not sure why you filed the motion when he isn't visiting anyhow. Um, now you're because ensuring my girls are uh, my girls uh, have been nervous I, I guess for him to stop over because he's um he's shown up at our apartment on certain days um he uh, told them it's, that it's he's letting you, them you go filed the motion I, like i say you you, you woke That's up the, you poked the bear and now we're going to have to do it so i'll set up an evidentiary hearing for parents okay good luck and thank you Council? yes ma'am Council. Just wanted to um indicate that parenting time will start um this this week and um, we'll follow the order according to its terms. And the parenting um, time, sorry, the parenting time isn't this his this weekend isn't his weekend. So okay, okay, that's fine. So next Wednesday is the start, and we will plan on that. You guys can work that out. The, the order's the order until it's yeah. not. We'll have a Perfect. hearing. Good luck, Thank everybody. You, Thank you. One, two, right. Thank you. Six, eight, Thank nine. DM Valdez Diaz versus Cruz Hernandez. Ma'am, did you serve a copy of this motion on, on uh, Mr. Hernandez? Correct. When did you send him this motion? Uh, I give it to him. When? I sent, uh, personally, I sent a text message to him. You, you gave it to him? So I sent him uh, by text message. By text message, you got yes. to you, you got to send them a copy of this motion. You don't just tell them when it is. You have to serve it on them. You have to send them. A, I can't hear it until until you serve it on them. He's got to got to get a get a copy of it. You can't just text them and say we're on uh, on this motion at some time. So you can reschedule this, but you have to send them a copy of the motion that you filed with the court. You're just asking for a DNA test? No. What are you asking for? You're saying a child was born out of wedlock. Yeah, but it's not his daughter. I understand, but you got to prove that. You're going to have to have a DNA test uh, for him and the daughter to show that. Okay. So if you want to get a DNA test on your own, you're fine with him and the, and the daughter okay. and bring it in and say he's not the father. Okay. Otherwise, you got to refile. Yeah, this but when I try, you're asking for a. Yeah, test. but I sent, I sent, yeah, but I sent a lot of emotion for him, but he never respond anything. I understand. And I tried you to go to him to give it the documents and everything. Ma'am, you got to serve this on him if you're going to have this motion. And this motion is going to result in me ordering a DNA test. Okay. For Scarlett and him to prove that he's not the father. Do you understand that? Okay. So, yes. So um, I'll issue the order that he has a DNA test. 
you got to serve this stuff on him. Uh, I'll, nothing's going to hurt him All from right. having a DNA test. Uh, so I'll issue the order to get the DNA okay. test. You'll have to get him there and your daughter so that we can determine if he's the Okay, father. after the the DNA test, I need to submit the divorce. And it is what? The divorce. What about it? You have to prove that he's not the father because the child was born while you were married to him. And once that happens, yes. then we can deal with it different. But you have to prove it first. Okay. You might want to talk to an attorney about this. Okay. All right. All right. right. I'll, I'll order a DNA test. Thanks. <laughs>